Welcome back to another episode of Icebound. We would absolutely love it if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. And of course, while you're doing that, I'm going to read some quotes from the last episode of Icebound. Quote number one. I would just like to note that when Yornir threw George to Barnabas and he started choking him with his crab claw, Derek, as George, choked out a Martha before it was revealed that De De Delia's true name and no one noticed. <laughs> Amazing attention to detail as always, Derek. Damn. I was like too angry in Barnabas. We all were. I was to, into to, it. To we all yeah, were. Yeah. Quote number two. This one's my favorite. Richie breaking the death saving throw rules out of excitement is so good. <laughs> but I wanted to point out at two uh, two hours, ten minutes, and forty three seconds that Nikki covered the doll's eyes too. Quote <laughs> 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 number cute. three. That description of the face of the cloaked figure in concert with all that had happened on the island prior was vivid, terrifying, and enthralling. Well done, Derek. <laughs> I am shaking with anticipation of the next episode. Also, my boy Scrim just can't catch a break. <laughs> no. And number four, I am so impressed with the breadth offered by the LOA crew. Comedy, horror, drama, and mystery. You do all so well. Thank, Thank you. you. I agree. So, be sure <laughs> to leave a comment below, and maybe next month yours will be read as well. In the meantime, go check out our merch shop. Become a patron over on Patreon today to get some brand new really awesome perks. And go to thecrookedmoon.com to pre-order your copy of The Crooked Moon on Backer Kit today. We are Legends of Avantress. This is Icebound. Lend us your strength and join us. You have just awoken as though from a dream. The feeling of timeless lifetime ceases to distort and warp before you and you come back into yourself in the frozen lands of Drakkar. The memories of your strange experience at the tower, on an island, at a lighthouse, on the ocean, off the coast, within some other place and perhaps some other time, your strange experience collapses and folds and shrinks away into the recesses of your minds. Blinking, you realize it is the dead of night. The sky is cloudless and the moon is full. Looking around, you all stand haphazard on a familiar ice sheet. It is, it is as though you were all trekking together moments ago before stopping here in mad silence. It feels impossible, and in some ways you are glad for the biting cold that is already numbing your face and freezing your body. You are wholly here. Barnabas, you feel closer to the ocean here than you have in months. Despite seemingly being on a coastal island moments ago, it is impossible to know how much ice separates you from the sea, but when you touch the shell at your side, you know deep down waves still surge beneath your feet, which brings you some comfort. 
I'm back. You're near. Your eye scans the horizon, the stars, the moon and its fullness. In moments you know two things with absolute certainty. You are standing where the tower was when you first encountered it five months ago, and again you have lost time to it. It is the 23rd day of the second month, the heart of winter. The hateful star in the sky appears no more. Queenie. Instinctively, you reach out for your magical companions, remembering the hurt they suffered during your shared experience. Your bond is as strong as ever, and you see those familiar spirits spring to your side with the same urgency, checking in to make sure all is well with you in return. Scrim, you are trembling even before the cold hits you. You feel cursed, cursed from the moment you woke in that graveyard half a world from here. Cursed to voyage south and be trapped in the harsh realm of Drakkar where you must fight to survive. Cursed to be haunted and hunted as part of some unknowable contract. And now, cursed for simply trying to help your friends. Tai Shen, your mind returns to your purpose here beyond the Valley of the Setting Sun and you think of those you met within the tower. Fu Zhao charged you to leave your village, to leave Mei Li, to learn the lessons of Avantris as he had. Your mind dwells on what lessons you've learned since you bid farewell. What lesson is there in this? For them, you look inward for answers and you become deeply pensive. A full minute passes before anyone dares speak, as though breaking the silence might shatter reality and pull you back. But all that surrounds you is the howling wind and ice and cold and darkness of night. What happens next is up to you. <coughs> well, that was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. I never thought I was going to say this, but I'm very happy to be back in Vrakar. <laughs> it is done. The star is gone. Uh, I is the so is the tower. So did we do the right thing or the wrong thing? Was that supposed to happen? Did that already happen? Is that going to happen again? Ha. <sighs> I look at Queenie and I, 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 I put like a hand on my chest, touching what I, maybe a sore spot, and I look at her and I say, I don't know. Is Scrim very, is he visibly cursed oh, in any way? <clears throat> I would say that he looks the same to you as he looked on the island and also as you've traveled with him in your journey and through throughout your car. Um, it, you. You probably don't have as depthful an understanding of his experience, given what separation you had during the, the time that you uh, were within the entity, let's say. And remind me what it was when he was on top and failed a saving throw, and because you cast a spell? Uh, no, I was on top and uh, everyone was dying and the cloaked figure offered to save my friends. That's and right. I accepted. You accepted. And That's I right. fell down into a horrific ice co coffin that got tighter and tighter and tighter until I couldn't move. Uh, and then they, they they did something to me to make sure that nothing stayed inside of me. Um, and I had asked, and I can't remember if what the answer was, if there was any physical marking on me. Yes, you asked that, and the answer was no. The answer is that you, you feel uh, yourself, you keep checking for like uh, a wound or um, a missing piece of you, right? And um, you feel like something is missing, a part of you. You've been diminished in some significant way, right? Mechanically, we know how that's yeah, represented. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the. <laughs> Fuck. It, there's the like. Um, What's the what's the word for it? The, the 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 understanding that they're sort of like phantom limbs, right? I would say that the closest analog to this would be something like a phantom soul. Not that the whole soul is gone, but that there had to be some Jesus. serious removal at a spiritual level <coughs> in order to free you, uh, because whatever had to be left behind had to be trapped 
in that same space where you and the rest were frozen for a, be- uh, right. for a period. Okay. I will have spent this time uh, packing my pipe. Mr. Fire Blossom? As he lights my pipe. I think we made it out unscathed. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> You're cool. standing here, aren't you, Mr. Stavascotch? Well, most of me. Queenie, we did do the right thing. And the evil, unnatural being that lived here is gone, but it is not without great cost. We have lost time. It is now the dead of winter. We will not survive long if we do not find shelter. We got rations on us? We got anything? I know my pack's empty. We don't have that sledge anymore. Aye. If I remember this place correctly, there was nothing out here to hunt. Five months ago, you remember being in this exact spot, uh, checking with the captain in on the tower and then fleeing in terror from your brief interlude uh, where you lost a little time and and his leg broke, of course. You remember uh, your encounter with the dragon, your second encounter with the Princess of Wrath. You remember finding the um, ship as it was being pulled into the ice, as it was being crushed by the ice into the sea, and then making your way up the uh, coast, uh, or at least uh, along the mountains that uh, are called the Spine, uh, by the clan called the Frost Hammer that you met. Hundreds and hundreds of miles you had to walk across that ice sheet. It took days. There was no food. There was no fuel along that path. There was the occasional animal, the occasional bear, the occasional starving wolf. But that was five months ago, and it hadn't yet turned to winter. And now you are here, and it is 30, 60, 70 degrees colder than it was then. And what rations are on you, uh, you can have, but this is a hard thing, a hard thing to start again, especially at this time. I was gonna ask if any, Queenie raises a good point, if any of our stuff is missing, or if we still seem to have our packs and everything's intact. You have been transported here as if nothing had happened. Okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> do I get the sense that where we are at the island, we can go directly across the frozen water to the eastern side of the mountain range? This is something that was not available to you before because to approach the tower and to be filled with such terror prevented you from going further east from this point. But the entire ocean was frozen and lays beyond the point that you stand on now. There is a new path. It passed east, and you follow Kai Shen's line, it's seen, uh, his eyes, and it seems that he, the same uh, idea has occurred to him, that why go back and retrace your steps when there is a new path that is before you, a chance to <coughs> find whatever it is on the southern coast of Drakkar, or perhaps a path north that might eventually <coughs> take you back to where you were originally heading, the capital city that uh, you were initially heading towards before being teleported here. <coughs> Well, there's one small, bright piece of good news. I still have eight candles, so we at least have some warmth, at least for almost a little over a week. Oh, yeah, that may save our lives. It's better than nothing. And the silver lining is that Daisy isn't a fool. She would have gone back to her people. We've lost two weeks, and we are hundreds and hundreds of miles away. But if we proceed east, yes, Taishem. East, and then head north. We perhaps could meet Daisy at our original plan location. Oh, there's no chance that she kept venturing south. Of co- yeah, of course there is. Daisy's got fire in her soul. And she knew our destination. We did not keep this from her. I- I'd be shocked if she went back to her people. I-, I think, I think we'll meet her again. I think she'll be different. If anyone can do it, I think it's Daisy. 
And if she can't, she died the way she wanted to. In fact, it is probably safer for her to be in the wilderness hunting and traveling south than had she been with us. Let us not waste time. Well, I, I don't think it would be a waste of time to stay here just a little bit longer. We were rushed last time we were here, and we were afraid of that tower that's gone now. You're a fisherman, Aye. and there may be fish beneath this ice. I know ice fishing is a thing. We can find a way to cut a hole in this place. We should start this journey with something fresh to take with us. We can't take much, but it's at least better than what we got. Also, it is the providence of the lady that we've made it back to the sea. I don't want to leave so soon again. We may not find beasts, because it's dead of winter now, but I, we may find fish. I don't know. The next time, maybe I never will see the sea again. And I'll look across just each, you know, do a full 360 of the, I presume it's all just frozen waste. Yeah, frozen, yeah, yeah. yeah. Frozen yeah. far enough out of far out enough that you can no longer see where the ice sheet ends and where the actual ocean would begin this far south. What I wouldn't give to just see a single wave. We cannot hazard going south for you to see the ocean. You stand upon it and Tai Shen can bring you access to it. That's all I need. I'll look at Tai Shen. <coughs> tai Shen will um start to move in a way that looks very familiar to you. You start to see him make some gestures like this, and you realize he has learned a few things since his time in Drakkar. He begins to cast Create Bonfire, and yep. he has learned this from the Frosthammer clan, watching yeah. the other kobolds who had uh, this same trick up their sleeves to avoid the need for having to carry fuel. And all of a sudden, this massive emerging flames out of nowhere, uh, uh, ignites in uh, one spot of the ice. And very quickly, you can see underneath it, the heat immediately starts to pool and turn to water. And he continues to do this one minute, two minutes, it starts to push down and force its way into the ice. And he's effectively creating a, a shaft to try and, and, and dig down into the, uh, into the water to see if you can make a, a large fishing hole through this method. I'll just watch intently holding my shell and I'll say, I told you I'd be back. I love her. And as soon as he's done, as soon as there's any kind of opening, I'll pull Harpoon off uh, my back and uh, I'll look to Tai Shen and I'll say, don't let it close up. I'll be back. He said, we'll fill our bellies. And I will just uh, just jump. I'll dive in. You're Straight. able to avoid the constitution saving throw that was inevitable with the ex uh, except for this bonfire. And uh, it takes a long time. Uh, Taishan is sweating from exertion by the time it's done. You are ready from minute one, but it isn't until uh, I would say two and a half hours goes by that he is able to melt through the 15 foot thick sheet of ice that is above the ocean floor, at the, uh, above the ocean uh, surface. At I'd be point. helping, just like <clears throat> trying to just shave a lot. This, it probably wouldn't do too much. But, but very soon, I'd be helping, a, yard, yeah. a perfectly smooth yard like uh, uh, tube uh, has been punctured, pushed through, and. Uh, Finally, getting uh, almost out of the distance of uh, his ability to cast the spell, um, he pauses for a moment and wipes his brow, and you are able to uh, dive in. You are hit by the surge of water, and you find yourself suddenly floating in a different kind of cold, not biting dry, icy cold with wind and howling all direction, but a uh, triton cold. A cold that actually feels immediately like home for you. <coughs> what are you doing? I will take several minutes just floating and just feeling the sea on my skin, perhaps for the last time as I think about the memories that have been unearthed, fragmented, 
and the dreams that I've been having since, and how confusing all of, all of it is, but feeling some sort of peace, given everything that's happened since the, uh, the Mind Flayers uh, had um, basically broken some sort of seal. And I will just feel the presence of the, of the woman in my shell, and feel the presence, and feel present mm -hmm. in the ocean. Um, and I'd probably only do that for a couple minutes, and then I would immediately then just start getting to work. Remember that my <clears> friends are, you know, we're starving after burning down a fucking lighthouse, and uh, we'll try to find any kind of fish, any kind of creature that I can uh, harpoon and bring back up. Okay, one moment. Give me 30 seconds. What are you all talking about as you, uh, uh, wait for Barnabas to uh, send back in. Uh, uh, Taishan is occasionally making sure that the um, ice doesn't freeze over, uh, but uh, you have to wait for him to sort of recover a little bit. There's an, a, a roaring bonfire uh, around you, like there has been for this short, uh, for this period of time. I would have spent the two and a half hours like building, like th knowing that okay, we'll probably like spend a good amount of time here, uh, with how long it would take and how long Barnabas would take to fish. So I would have been trying to build some like windbreaks with the snow that had fallen on top of the ice, if there is any, um, and just sort of setting up makeshift like tents with my cloaks and anything else that I had on my pack um, to sort of just make us a little more comfortable. Okay. Scrim. Um, I would still be wearing the boots and gloves and, and coat that we got from all that long time ago. I held on to those things. You had the opportunity to take more wintry gear if you wanted to from Ogreton, but you are warm enough in these climate-appropriate clothes. So I would be wearing those things and absolutely uh, not helping you or near at all moose snow. Uh, and That's hunkered funny. down as close to where that bonfire was. Whatever little warmth or heat there was, I'd be sitting there. And Scrim would be very deep in contemplative thought uh, about the what he experienced right at the end of our journey before returning to Jakar and the, what felt like infinite pain and never-ending torment uh, mm -hmm. that was allegedly being implemented to help him. And just trying to make sense of it. It's um, something that you find you can compartmentalize. You, 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 you because of the nature of the timey-wimeyness of it, the stretching of time and whatnot, it feels like, oh, that happened to me. This was a terrible drama but it happened almost as if in a dream. So I can close the drawer. When I open the drawer, it's still there, but I can close the drawer should I need to. And you sort of fiddle with the drawer for a little bit and have that conversation with yourself about what to do with the fact that that new drawer exists in the first place. Queenie. Uh, I think Queenie would notice that Scrim seems to be lost in his own thoughts and she wouldn't want to intrude your near. Um, has a task at hand, and so she would venture out a little bit further, um, knowing that sometimes beasts will wander and get lost, and that with how cold it is, if something died out here, it should still be salvageable. Mm -hmm. And so she is would um, just use her ranger senses and the help of her bees to see if she could find anything at all. Make a, if you're using a feature, use the feature, but if you not, if not, then go ahead and make a nature or survival check. Like a, there were wolves out here mm -hmm. that were hunting. Yeah. So like a wolf that got left behind, broken Yeah, got, eyes. you know, got lost or <coughs> wandered um, too far away. I also would um, have taken one of my harpoons off my back mm -hmm. and right where the hole is, I would have stuck it into the ice. Smart. So, yeah. I mean, it's endless and repeatable, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. no features underneath. Um, and uh, let's quickly resolve it. I'll just say that you uh, find yourself... Um, you said survival? Yeah. 30. Oh. You all uh, have a sense That's that insane. Queenie uh, can take care of herself. And she uh, uh, walks into the night, crunching feet disappearing, becoming inaudible. Eventually her figure is impossible to detect. Even against such a flat plain, uh, uh, moon-filled night such as this, she almost disappears. You walk for 30, 45 minutes before you sort of 
have that instinct, that gut idea that there is going to be something in this direction, that ranger uh, 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 teaching that you have in the forest still applies in many ways here. And it is a grim sight when you find what is a dire wolf, a lone dire wolf, but it is not alive. It is clearly having, was trying to take another step, but you f- can see these like icicles pushed back. It is completely frozen solid, this wolf, dead in this f- pose, like a statue. Uh, I believe <coughs> my bees have a carrying capacity. Yeah, gathered swarm. <clears throat> it's considerably higher and because of a feature it's I gave you. Yeah, it's big like bees. Like 500 hand. pounds, something like that. It's a big it hand could, of it bees. Could grab a, yeah. It could grab yeah. A wolf or But if, if you believe that they could carry the wolf, I would have the bees swarm around it and um, carry the wolf back. The strengths of your bees being what they are, <clears throat> they are able to break this wolf popsicle from uh, free from the surface of the ice sheet and uh, pretty soon uh, float it. You looking at it, it looks extremely intact. You'd wager that it did not, uh, to your uh, uh, guess, um, decay or mold at all. And it was, it would have, Waited until the sea had thawed and then plunged to the ocean floor had you not suddenly been there to pluck it. And so with a uh, idea that you'd be able to thaw this and perhaps gain additional rations from it, you start to turn back and return with your uh, bees. Okay, awesome. Um, Barnabas. How much do you think a dire wolf weighs? <clears throat> Hold on. I actually have ration math for you. Just give me important. one moment. They might not be able to carry it like until 10th level. Because they, they, they can carry 250 pounds right now at 5th level. Uh, I'm gonna guess we fought them in episode levels. 2, was it? Episode 2? Yep. Uh, yep. This one's also frozen. <coughs> uh, roll 5d10. Oh. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> well, remember it was starving, maybe. Yeah, it's getting a little dire wolf. Really? It's a big fucker. With them good eats. 40. 40. Um, so, uh, and then add 10. That was the original math. 50. It would have been 50. Because it's starving, you would have you will be able to procure 25 rations from this, which are still a shitload of ras- <laughs> rations because of the size of a wolf being what it is, but um, half of what you would normally expect given its um, starvation uh, that will probably end its life. Uh, yeah, as you walk back, Barnabas, you are... <clears throat> underneath the um, ocean. Are you looking for prey? Yeah. Make I'm looking for any kind of fish or prey or any kind. Make a make your own nature or survival check. If there are any kinds of, you know, seals. I know Yorn here won't like <gasps> that. But, uh, all these seals. Uh, I'm going to use a twist. I'm going to use two twists. That was a natural one, folks. Survival, eh? I wish it would go d- down past religion occasionally. Survival. 19. With a 19, you are floating there, and you're not seeing anything. I mean, your dark vision is limited, but you should have a sense that there are fish here, schools of fish. Perhaps you need to go deeper. And you start to let yourself... Uh, your layer buoyancy sort of change and shift mm-hmm. in the way that it needs to in order to sort of slowly sink, and at uh, certain at depth. My ballast, my internal ballast. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> I mean, they would down. have a Triton would have Tyson, a ballast Tyson's swim bladder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely would have a swim <clears throat> swim bladder. I don't have to tell you, folks. You uh, unballast yourself, let's call it, and uh, you start to sink down more and uh, more into the depths of this ocean. And uh, you can't fathom how deep it is. Uh, You're nowhere near the bottom, you sense. But all of a sudden, you do see a creature. Left, right, and almost certainly a hungry creature. This is a shark. Not a giant shark, but a shark nonetheless, a predator of the sea. Boy. Come on, beastie. And I am just going to... uh as soon as I see, um, I'll pick the, the harpoon that has the rope try it, fashioned around it, attached to my netting. And I am going to just, as soon as I feel like I have a shot, 
at all. I'm gonna try to harpoon it. As soon as you're in distance, make an attack roll. Um, I was gonna do it recklessly. <laughs> oh. That seems like it would be, it would d- decrease the accuracy of a harpoon shot, but here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harpoon! That'll be a 24. That hits. Uh, roll for damage. Uh, okay. And roll for initiative. <laughs> Seven points. Seven points. Seven points. Uh, I'm not raging. The uh, harpoon does stick into the side of this shark. Um, but it does not uh, do nearly enough damage to kill it. As it turns, swims immediately <laughs> towards you and uh, gets a 14 to hit. That misses. Uh, I will say that it chomps in, but it doesn't do enough damage it's to advantage. cause you serious injury. Oh, it's advantage. Oh, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, now it's the 17. That hits. That really hits. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> that's you, going Rich. to be. Thank you, Rich. Just what maintain the a game stage. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Uh, he bites into you and he does eight points of piercing damage as he digs his teeth into one of your arms uh, uh, and you suddenly find yourself in an underwater fight which has rules and dungeons and dragons that I don't know. We're just going to quickly do this back and forth. Go ahead and make another attack. Or I think they both have swim speed. speeds. It basically doesn't matter. What's that? They both have swim speeds. It basically doesn't matter. You yeah. Know I mean? they I'm going no, but to... but there are other things about like... As it, uh, as it swims out, I will have been pulling the, the rope. And with that, uh, barnacles are cover, will cover me, and the, the seawater that would normally coat me is just uh, just all fading off you. all around yeah. me. And in a single uh, motion, my hand will shift into a claw, and I'm going to try to just open up its uh, belly. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to roll three attacks. Well, all reckless, I guess. 24... Natural 20. Nice. Uh, and then a 21. So, I mean, that's just an absolute shit ton. Two, three, four. <laughs> I like how you were like, dinky harpoon, and then <laughs> mega claw! <laughs> <laughs> One of those underwater uh, crabs that can, like, speed of sound attack. They're oh, mantis um, shrimp. Yeah. The, yeah. The oh punch. my god, yeah, their yeah. punches are, like, the hardest. They would literally kill you. Yeah, the mantis. They would cave your chest It's in like an underwater bullet. With the force Six. of their yeah. punch, yeah. 12, I think I need to give you a mantis shrimp attack. 612. That would be so funny. 612 uh, plus um, 21. Is it more than 12 15? 12 plus 21 is 30, <laughs> 33. 33. Uh, you are able to gut this thing alive oh. underneath the ground. Uh, it was uh, underneath the water. It was clearly looking for its own meal, but didn't realize that Barnabas was, of course, uh, uh, who he is. And I'll and wrap the rope around it so it doesn't lose its entrance, because that's good eats. <laughs> and I will basically yeah. wrap it up and sling it over my back and find my way back. You are able to find your original harpoon easily, and you are able to find that the water has been kept uh, frozen. You wait for a second because for a brief period a bonfire emerges just about uh-huh. the moment that you're about to go under, uh, above the water, and then it dis- um, dissipates and you're able to uh, find yourself uh, uh, cold air. And well, before I do that, I see that Taishan's doing that. I'll look around, just basically black water, right, all around me and maybe a little bit of red from the the blood that's still leaking from the shark. And with my hands free while I'm in the water, I'm gonna grab my shell, and I'm just gonna look at it, and then just hold it to my ear for underwater, perhaps for the last time. You listen closely, and you hear her voice. It's no longer distant or warbled the way that it would be to any other creature listening to uh, something underwater. That is how it feels to you when you are deep inland. But here it sounds like pure crystal. It whispers its own poetry into your ears. The voice nearly kisses you with every word. And you hear a sorrowful goodbye just towards the end, beckoning you to come back when you can. When you can. Goodbye. I never got to give you. Farewell, my love. And uh, I'll hold that. I may return. I put it back in my things and I'll climb back up. 
You are all uh, presented with uh, two, two things at the same time. Uh, Queenie returns with a dire wolf uh, in uh, uh, being carried by her swarm. Uh, totally frozen, uh, completely frozen through. Something that'll take some time to process. And Barnabas. <laughs> Oh, crab climbing legging. up the yeah, crab legging yeah, thank you. Uh, crab legging up the side of this frozen tube, uh, and uh, finding your way to uh, the Yorniers makeshift camp. You are starting to look like you are in rations for at least the foreseeable future. Hell yeah! Nicely done, Miss March. Yeah, same to you. We have a certifiable feast here. Yours, I think we could keep fresh for fresh fish and stew and things. Um, with this, I figured if y'all wouldn't mind helping, we can tear it apart. We can take the bones and use those to boil down for a nice stock for that fish. Aye. Make a stew, all kinds of, of other things. Um, the meat, I was thinking we could, it was flash frozen. So if we could find some kind of way, maybe we create out of the ice itself some way to uh, dry out this meat. We can make some jerky that'll last us a while. Save a little bit for the stew, too. Darshan immediately, so he's starting to look a little more tired for, for the effort, uh, creates another bonfire, not just to give everyone uh, the renewed warmth, um, but uh, he doesn't have to lower it the way that he did to push down. He can just sort of keep it uh, uh, right there. And so even though it creates almost like a smooth puck uh, of a, a pool of water underneath it, the fire is stable. And as long as he just keeps doing that every minute or so, uh, you'll be able to have warmth. Mr. Yornir, I don't mean to take your religious artifacts. We would be able to fashion a smoke box from those tusks and the wolf pelt. We could smoke all of this and take us with us by midday tomorrow. You will not use my tusks. But we can fashion something. Alright, I think we're out of wood. Oh, well, I could use my harpoons. And I will basically, what I'll do is I'll just make an, uh, an improvised smoke box the best that we can. Mm -hmm. And drape the wolf. I think we had a couple wolf pelts from before. Yeah, we still have that. We did. Um, just drape uh, the wolf pelt, and then uh, basically, as Queenie and I are probably cleaning the shark and the wolf, and then everything that we get, you know, we'll all, we'll, we'll set aside something to like create like an actual stew, like Queenie said for tonight. And then everything else was. You all, you all have the, the the pots and pans on your person than it would take to survive individually. And when assembled together, you uh, uh, are very efficient at creating almost a full kitchen. Um, uh, pouring off uh, scum, making sure that uh, everything is pure, clean, delicious. Uh, you, you've got one of the best chefs in the world uh, uh, in, in all of Avantris, uh at least uh, as far as he's concerned uh, with you. And. He, it's amazing how efficient you are, how much more you are capable in this space. As cold as it is, with limited resources, uh, you are starting to learn how to survive in this strange Arctic space. Uh, I, Scrim would be helping, uh, mm. you know, especially in the kitchen with the cooking. Yeah. You know, he, he listens to Barnabas to a degree, right? I'd be, you know, Queenie had asked to help clean uh, some of the meat or whatever. Scrim would be helping, but while we're doing this, he's looking distressed. He's, every every hour that passes, he looks a little bit more distressed. And he's a little agitated, he can't sit still, and as we get closer and closer to being done prepping and cooking and getting ready to enjoy the meal, finally he goes, No! Ah, I can't take it anymore! Scrim, my friend, what is wrong? I can't believe I'm gonna do this! And uh, he walks over to the, the hole in the ice that uh, is there, that has been left from this thing. He reaches into his pack, and he pulls out a small leather pouch. He unties it, he upends it, and 77 gold coins pour out into the, uh, into the 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 uh, the ocean. And they, they, you can hear them splashing and clinking, and they, they, they kind of do this as they, you know, mm -hmm. slowly disappear out of sight. And, ah, 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 ah. You've been carrying all of that weight with you this entire time? 
I can carry more food now. Yes. Mr. Stabiscotch? <laughs> what? That was a fine offering. She'll appreciate that. If it, make, if it makes you feel better, I, I have two platinum pieces on me and they're yours if you want them. No, no. No, I'll carry them, but I'm saying when we get out of here. Look, I know. You all probably just think I'm lazy and greedy. Well, no, and you'd be right. right. Okay. <laughs> but there's a real chance that someone here in this frozen wasteland might take currency. I'm not completely insane for holding on to gold. It hasn't come in handy yet, but I'm telling you all. How long have we been in this land, Scream? Months? Better part of a year? I don't know! How many have we met that accept this kind of currency, Scream? None. I, I don't know. Yet! He's got a point, though. If there's, if there's a major city here, well, whatever this place could call a major city, if there are people, we, we just met someone that had teleportation magics. If we meet powerful m magic users that can do stuff like that, that, have the way to get in and out of your car easily, things that we don't have, they might use currency. And at the end of the day, people are people, and people are greedy. And gold is gold. People love gold. That's all I'm saying. Well, to be fair... Mr. Yornir, that the first native of Jakar that we encountered demanded a tribute of gold pieces. <laughs> the dragon. Yep, that's true. And if we come into contact with her again and we don't have any gold or any powerful magical items to give her, she might not take as much favor in us as she did the last time. And that is why but I've that... only dumped 77 coins and I'm still holding on to 100. <laughs> I was gonna say, that is not the reason you dump those coins, though, Scrim. And here I thought you were getting altruistic on me, Mr. Stavisco. Only half altruistic. Uh, yeah. Always have a backup plan. May you present me with the hundred gold pieces? Why are you bending over? <laughs> no, you're out Stand of your mind. Up. I'm not giving Stand you my hundred gold it. pieces. No, I do not want to take it. I want to see it. I look over my shoulder. I look all around us to see if anybody's nearby. I'll point. I'll point to the the eyeballs of the shark and the direwolf. Like, like what the fuck, man? <laughs> and I pull out another small leather coin purse. I, I'm like six feet away. And I jingle it. This is 100 gold pieces, you say? Yes. What's it to you, Mister Yornia? The domain that we enter. Ruled by a princess of frost and wrath, primal savagery, collected barrels, taller than you are, full of those same gold pieces. You think this would provide her any kind of tribute? It's better than nothing. How many gold pieces do you have? The only gold that I have. Queen in our holds. It is yours if you want it. I'm just saying, it never hurts to be prepared. Gold and platinum will not warm our flesh in the dead of winter. Gold and platinum will not feed us <coughs> or shelter us. As far as I'm concerned, it has no worth. Okay, well, agree to disagree. I dumped half! That's all you get for now! I can carry more food! But if you dumped the rest, you could fill your pockets with more food, could you not? Uh, yeah, but the stew would, it would soak through my pockets. Uh, you know, coins are fine, they're good, they're not going anywhere. Perhaps a soup pouch? <laughs> soup in the pouch? I, I don't think it, it's not... <laughs> oh, there's not going to be any leftovers on your stew. <laughs> Maybe you can freeze it into a brick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the coin pouch is not wax lined. Look, I, you know, I couldn't afford that. Let's be realistic here. You know, I've been living on the streets for forever. It, like, like, it, it doesn't matter. Let's just focus on the good deed that Scrim did today. 
Yes, very true. Perhaps some celebratory tea. <laughs> Thank you, Taishen. I appreciate that. Taishen grabs your money pocket and uh, pocket money and leaves. <laughs> he runs starts running away. Oh, I, I have it. I slit his throat. <laughs> In Sorry, Taishen. I feel like Taishen would offer everyone a cup of tea as we sit down for. A you meal. sit down for a Maybe wolf not. broth and shark meat stew. Uh, there are no vegetables, and yet it is one of the most delicious things you've ever you eaten. Mean. For uh, and, and especially with the uh, tea that comes with the meal, uh, specifically um, uh, thoughtfully uh, chosen by Taishan to match the flavor palette of wolf and shark stew. But it is particularly delicious because what survived wasn't your physical body, your mortality. Uh, what survived wasn't uh, a town, uh, or your group, or your hope, or your, uh, or, or a continent, uh, or the cosmos. What survived the experience that you had was your sanity. And it feels extremely sane and grounded to have such a simple thing as a meal together, even in the biting cold of Drakkar. Let's take a quick break there. As you finish your meals, you see the sun peek over the horizon. It's still cloudless. There doesn't seem to be any weather on any horizon that you can see, and the illumination <coughs> immediately hits the bright white sheet of ice that you find yourself standing on. It's pale red, very distant and cold sun, but uh, it provides some amount of warmth. More importantly, it provides visibility. You now see that you are very close to that uh, mountain range, what must be the southern bottom uh, half of the of the spine, you can see very thinly along the uh, wall, and you can see that traveling east in the direction that Yornir has suggested that Tai Shen was looking um, would afford you perhaps a new path. Mm -hmm. So we still haven't slept yet, right? Uh, no, you've not. But I will say that when you landed, you felt energy. I, I'm not going to make you roll for exhaustion at this point. Uh, it's going to be a long day of trekking, um, but with a night of rest this coming evening, uh, you feel like you'll be on track. <clears throat> well, I believe we should take shelter here. Let us sleep one night in this camp. Eat in the morning, have breakfast, and then take all the food we can carry. Aye. All right. Is everyone okay? Yeah, I'll be all right. As good as we can be. <laughs> You're alive. That's what matters. We're still standing. What about you, Taishan? Well, you, it could be a little warmer. And <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm clear on what you're uh, agreeing to do as a group. Uh, you're saying that as the first sun rose after your first night uh, getting the shark, getting the wolf, that you're going to get your rations and move on then, or are you going to wait an additional day for the following morning to, to trek onwards? I think if we landed and got it cooked, you know, Basically, go to sleep right after we're done cooking and smoking. I don't know if that would take us into the night or what, day. Six hours of the sunlight, yeah. right? I don't know if it, if the as far. Oh, I guess we're actually further south, so it might be a lot more bright. I don't know. Wait or dark? I don't know. Anyway. I I haven't been doing the timey wimey okay, yeah, long day smart. short day yeah. thing. E it just, either way, works I think by the time we hunted, prepped, cooked. We would just take that day to do all of that and rest, and then, then long rest. and okay. prepare then long for the rest. trek the next day. Then I'll say that you take wait until the second day to trek on, but you go through the motions of survival. You make sure that you're taking care of yourselves. So occasionally, you'll all be engaged in conversation. Other times, you'll pair off, or three of you will be talking. Other times, long stretches of silence as you continue to process the experience that you went through. But it feels good to be taking care of these mundane tasks before 
you fill yourself up and you would have had more than enough wolf rations and shark to do so, topping off your character sheet with whatever remaining inventory slots that you might have, Five. you'll be able to trek onward. Is there anything else you want to do before you leave the, second, the morning of the second day? After I want to ask if I, I assume I need to burn a candle overnight. Because Taishin uh, would not be able to keep up the... Yeah, Taishin has to... And I'm trying to remember if mechanically I gave it to you for four or six hours. Do you recall? Each candle was apparently eight hours oh. worth of, of... I wrote it down. Hold on. I can... Hold on. I believe that's true. The that's joy of I taking notes. I, I could look it up, too. I just couldn't no, remember okay. if you had it in front of you. I'm almost 100% sure, but... Yes, 36 eight-hour uses is okay. what I originally had. I'm down to eight eight-hour uses. When he wasn't assisting with the smoking <clears throat> of the shark meat and the wolf meat, he would have needed a good amount of rest. And so uh, he would have asked for two. So then I would use a candle and overnight for, and overnight. for like a little bit of rest and just processing himself. Yeah. Two candles? Two candles. Tai Shen, you fuck. Why would 16 hours for one day? Well, yeah, because, like, I mean, I guess technically casting bonfire, is it a... Is it a it's every minute. Is it? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I've yeah, got six yeah. candles left. And, it would, and, and, those, and those last eight hours you would last Tai-Shen. you well into the morning so that you could all get up and get around. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. that's fine. You can go first light. I'm not going to argue yeah. with the you can DM. go first light. I'm not going to argue with the DM. Did we? And so we were long rested. We're good there, right? Um, yes, you may all take a long rest. We play this, <laughs> and it may just be because I'm in full soy aft mode. Uh huh. But oh. does the dire wolf being frozen <laughs> to death? If Queenie had relayed that information, yeah, I think like it'd be obvious frozen, looking at it. Would that be odd? Would that be so? What Mikey is thinking mm-hmm. that similar to when. Waymar Royce and the rest of his Night's Watch Rangers found the wildlings dead. It's like, well, no, this snow can't kill wildlings. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there had to have been something else that, and it was basically because the White Walkers, the others come in and they basically flash freeze them to death. Whoa. And so is this, and so I'm thinking like, did a dragon come in? Well. Uh, I'm, not, like, I'm not gonna make you roll for it because <laughs> Queenie would have been able, would, wouldn't have to, and she'd be able to convey this information. Um, what likely happened was this wolf was traveling very weak, looking for food, and got hit by a storm. Okay, okay. This happens in real life in nature, in, okay. in, in, on Earth, in our world. And it is possible that the creature just finally, ex- out of exhaustion, stops, but is so frozen it slows down to the point where it just flash freezes. Damn. Like do I recover one level of exhaustion during this rest? You do. Yes. It's fucking good. I was thinking that, like, the fucking... If the dragon's like going out back and forth for some reason, that's what I thought. No, nope. uh, okay. I'm it's, glad you asked. It. Yeah, that was not my no intent to infer. Uh, I made that up on the spot because of some fact of nature that I that I, I had great. in my brain, and, and I wanted to make sure Queenie felt rewarded for her uh, independence and bravery. Um. You pack up your things, you enjoy a long rest, and feeling uh, perhaps not refreshed isn't the right word, but um, capable of moving onward on this morning of the second day, uh, you trek onward, passing jagged spires of ice that you find jutting out from this ice sheet uh, that cast cold shadows on the frozen landscape. You continue to make your forward, and you see all these abstract um, ice shapes. Uh, it's so cold here, and the weather is uh, uh, so um, tempestuous that you uh, occasionally come across um, enormous frozen waves of ice. It isn't perfectly flat in this direction. It's chaotic. Each of these waves, the size of a cottage or perhaps even larger, they dot the landscape, glistening caps shimmering like precious gems in the cold. And eventually you find an inlet. Uh, it takes you another day. But uh, you pause and make your way down to, uh, 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 you pause for a moment, enjoy a, a, a night of darkness. There is no encounter, there is no challenge aside from the trekking. Five candles left. <laughs> While this is happening, I'd like to just be taking whatever kind of like bone pieces or stone pieces mm-hmm. that I can find along the way that are roughly, um, this sort of size and shape. 
um, and just basically wrist runes and just sort of keep them on me and just start okay. sort of collecting them. Yeah. I, I would say that you would have collected the best ones um, to stay uh, as lightweight as possible on the morning uh, uh, that you were packing up. Um, and so uh, between uh, perhaps some of the skull pieces, uh, perhaps some of the teeth from the shark, mm. uh, from the very backwards, Ooh. thickest, uh, uh, perhaps um, uh, the fins, you know, you found these flat, beautiful pieces of uh, uh, bone and you bleached them, you made sure that they were cleaned and ready for wristing. Wristing being the word for those of you just watching the, for uh, <laughs> making a rune mark on a uh, stone or on a uh, bone. I just wrist wrist wrist. To wrist. Can't Yornir just cast Goodberry once a day? Yeah, it's not very sporting. <laughs> so I wasn't going to. It it's for emergencies only. <laughs> um, you were. Now you, uh, you have survived through two arcs of Icebound, and you have leveled up. Uh, it would be easy to find food. Uh, you, Taishen can create a bonfire at a snap with a snap of a finger. You are changed from your experience here. And so had you wanted to, or if you want to, when things get dire and you run out of wolf meat, you can create a bitter token that tastes foul but fills your belly for a uh, day and gives you nutrients without starving to death. I think Yornir would feel like it would be an, in emergencies, that's when you use it. And that, you know, we should be living off the land and... Yeah, there's a connection to it. Yeah, it's like, not just replace it. Against yeah, it's against my religion, 100%. Then you gotta come up with reasons why no one uses laser guns in Dune. Exactly right. So you gotta go bend exactly over right. backwards to justify that because it's cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, actually, it's a nuke on both ends. Eventually, you find an inlet, very <laughs> similar to the glacier you originally walked up when you were traveling along the western coast. Uh, you send upwards this inlet uh, towards the feet of the mountain range that you know the Frosthammer clan called the Spine, this treacherous mountain range that stretches the full length of Jakar. I've described it all. <laughs> That's right. You've walked its length once before and you think of the hundreds of miles that you need to walk to get to the top, to the crown, to the forest where you encountered the, her <coughs> the Herald of Fear, where you eventually were trapped in Ogreton uh, and experienced all of the things that happened in that strange space. And you remember the words of Secundus looking at those mountains and the violence that he described there. As you ascend, you spy a small mound of stones and you recognize this to be a very familiar sight, a cairn, one of these, uh, these standing stones that uh, uh, were all dotted along the western coast uh, for navigation and occasionally for uh, the storage of fuel or food or messages. Uh, and in the face of the mountain, just behind this cairn, you see an ancient stone portal, one very similar to the couple that you have been told about and that uh, you had experienced previously. Ha <laughs> If only, if only. To see it. Yeah, I just wish we could use it. And go somewhere. Anywhere. Perhaps we can. Is there any chance that there's still some power dormant? We know for a fact that they use these gateways with arcane magic. The kobold spoke of using these. To get across their empire. Yes. No, I just kind of thought you had to be one of them to do it. I, I mean, we could certainly give it a try, but, you know, uh, well, what are we going to do? You're speaking as you ascend, and the dot that is that portal yeah, shape is yeah. getting larger and larger, and you're realizing it's darker. This is not a, a, a frame with a cliff face behind <gasps> it, but instead, this one seems to have been sundered well beyond those that you'd seen before. This has been broken, ah. and the it, a portal appears to be open to the elements. Oh, you never mind. Staring inside, whatever trick or phrase or key or object the kobolds used to pass through this gate is meaningless here, for that illusion is gone. This mountain pass is totally open to you, and you can see that it shoots down into darkness, a shadow tunnel. Oh. So it's like what we were hoping it would be the first one, where like it like a passes through the mountains. It this seems is like to be a tunnel that has been forged oh, right inch. through yeah. and underneath the mountains. Like the portal got bored out. We can just like... The ah. statues that would have been on the left and the right of that yeah. long dead empire have been completely destroyed. 
but the frame itself is so broken that perhaps the magic itself was crashed. And you can walk inside if you want to. You can even see inside. At the very least, we can get out of the elements, right? Surely there's nothing living in there. <laughs> Going underneath the mountain. I, it's just an idea. If we don't want to, you know, freeze to death. It was the divine providence we were hoping for the first time we saw something like this. I think that there may be no other choice. There's no way we survive going over. There is danger. It is possible that going into this tunnel we enter her domain. It's always the biggest, baddest beasties that live deeper and deeper. Whether it's the sea or in the earth. Are we ready to stick to our plan that we discussed those weeks ago? We don't have a choice. We may have actually bought ourselves some time being transported this far south. Tai Shem. I was about to say, <laughs> Mr. Fire Blossom. What do you ask him? What can you sense from... I guess, I guess we would have to get closer. <clears throat> yeah. But the intention would be like... Uh, <clears throat> Based on what you know about dragons and dragonborn culture, is there anything you can tell about this tunnel, the way it was dug into the mountain? Red arcane magics. That is right. Which the likes. Well, I suppose Mr. Stavis Scotch uses arcane magics, but I wouldn't expect you to know anything about this. <laughs> he, he explains that when you guys found the first portal, he wasn't able to discern anything except that it was draconic in nature because of the things that were obvious to all of you. Wings and, and draconic-like <laughs> faces and the, and the statues that had been uh, uh, tossed aside, like those cool statues in that one scene in Goldeneye. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. And then uh, he was able to discern some of the language, but only barely, roughly, the dr and draconic, uh, sort of having shared some sort of like evolutionary language with the... Um, uh, Symbols that have been <clears throat> written, wristed into the into the cairns. Um, he wasn't able to communicate draconically, uh, or rather, it didn't come up that he d talked about anything with the kobolds. And very little is known about the culture that was. What these? I don't. <laughs> Sorry, I snapped. I. You know how easy it is to, oh, to start yeah, we just snap just did the same thing. We've been thing. snapping. The them. fucking yeah. G two pilots they snap alpha at you. <laughs> um, That's anyways, funny. Uh, yeah, he he gives you very uh, limited experience. You you all shared that knowledge. He, he doesn't have more to give you as you are approaching this strange space, um, because he doesn't know these dragon uh, born. He he knows his own culture. They <laughs> didn't they didn't make tunnels like this one. Uh, he knows. Um, and he doesn't know if it would require magic or uh, literal physical tools and tunneling to get something like this uh, over however many centuries it would have taken. But he tries to be very helpful about it. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. I, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, I don't say that. <clears throat> uh, how many days travel do we think we are from this tunnel? You are approaching it. You're 300 feet away. Oh, wow. And lo looking inside, you can see that it's dark because the, the sun is in the position that it's in. Um, but uh, it's this huge tunnel. Uh, it, it goes in and in and in, deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and you can see that just behind where the illusion would have been, uh, whatever barrier or threshold you would need to cross in order to arrive on the other side, uh, there's a small outpost. Uh, there's some sort of a wooden structure there. And even farther in, there does appear to be um, a smaller structure. It reminds you very much of the ship that you saw at the top of the river when you finally caught up to it. Mm. Queenie. I do not wish to ask you to put yourself in danger, but... You're gonna do it anyway? You are the best suited. 
could you scout ahead? Sure. And sense what you can sense with your innate connection to bees. The being the be bees. <laughs> And just stay safe and stay out of sight. Go in there and do it inside. Or if I mean, at least investigate the structures. And as soon as you see any kind of danger, you come back and tell us. You and we go can. Inside a little bit. As far as you into the darkness are willing to go. All right, I ain't got dark vision though. Fuck. Wait, that seems a bit odd for rabbits. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's right here in my character sheet. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Neither do I. <laughs> well, perhaps Mr. Stavisculch can go with you. No, can't see anything. Scoot is uh, looking uh, down there and there's a bunch of skeletons <laughs> just like... Oh my god, Creek. <laughs> oh no! If only you had Creek. Someone, no, someone opened the door with Greater oh, Creek. Oh, of and course. Greater Creek minutes. would have opened this door for sure. It's <laughs> a nightmare. Uh, uh, I guess we'll go together. Sure thing. Oh yeah, your peoples are used just to tunnels, <laughs> dark tunnels. <laughs> just let her go first, and just listen to her directions. All right. You will be her eyes when it gets dark, and that is it. You feel for you serve no other role in this. <laughs> what do you understand? <laughs> what do you mean that's it? I'm trying to make sure she doesn't break a leg or something. I trust that Queenie can handle herself. You are her eyes when she needs it. Do not attempt to help further than this. Do you understand? <laughs> I do not understand <laughs> your hip! While they're arguing, Queenie just goes ahead and goes on and on. She's 60 feet away from you when, by the time you oh, realize what's going on. <laughs> I will run to try to catch up. You attempt to catch up, and you eventually do, dashing as you do. And eventually you're uh, side by side, and you uh, are able to um, hear the... Uh, sort of howling sound uh, of the wind at this entrance. You look over and you can see that this outpost is built right up against the interior of the tunnel. Uh, it would be fashioned for... Um, is this considered mountainous terrain? Oh. Which is my favorite terrain. As soon as you step from the ice sheet to the <laughs> fucking mountain, <to>, yeah. <laughs> you feel the music the, changes the mountain like a world of rain. <laughs> 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 That's the new. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess it yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's got a single thin line underneath it just to really You're emphasize right the it. Spine. Yep, yep. You go from one level, like level biome to another level biome, fucking Minecraft style, and for sure. Yeah. Um, I would, uh, as I reach the entrance, mm -hmm. um, I would get down to the ground and place my ears upon the snow. <clears throat> And look around. You see the ears kind of like darting this way and that, almost like um, little um, little antenna, just trying to pick up sounds and things. Um, the bees are making um, little cones to amplify my hearing. Um, as I use primeval awareness to see if I can sense any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, phase fiends, or undead present within six miles. Oh. oh. That's pretty far. <laughs> Drums in the deep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they're just a bow rock down there. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing but a thing. Durin's Bane, I think they were calling it. <laughs> the feature you're like using it. doesn't give you a number no. or directionality. Mm -mm. But I am going to. <coughs> oh. Because I want you to have the additional information. You do sense some of those things. But you do not sense them forward into this tunnel. You suspect that, given that that is 30,000 feet in all directions and a massive sphere around you as you bonk, 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 use your ability, that probably some of these mountains have some. But you do not get a sense that that is six miles in front of you if the, if the tunnel goes that deep. Okay. Hmm. Um, all right. Check number one. Done. Uh, you ready to go inside the darkness? Uh, ha. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> My entire goal is to be as perceptive and alert and attentive as possible just to tell Queenie not to trip over things 
to look out for things and say like, okay, a little bit to your right, a little bit to your left, like holding her hand and trying to guide her. As the, she's the sensing it, she put her ear down was metal, and she's now stuck to the actual floor. No, oh, okay. no. Uh, you, you've already failed. No, the uh, <laughs> it's a wax <laughs> strip. <laughs> it's a giant fly trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just have one naked ear. Brutal. <laughs> Nightmare. Um, no, you you are looking out for things. I guess make some sort of a perception checky. I will make some sort of a perception check. Don't fuck me now. Ah. We can twist it. That's oh, you're, disa- you're disadvantaged because dark vision. You're disadvantaged. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the point of having fucking dark vision then? You, you can see. You can still see. Holy shit! Really? Huh? Can you it just not say that? I can see all? up to sixty feet. It doesn't. It doesn't say anything oh, it about. Oh, it's perception. Anyway, I'm joking. Oh, okay. It's, you're you're kidding. <laughs> well, no, technically, that rule is written, but we've never we've never. Fought. Yeah, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna force really? you to do that. So, so there, there's there's enough. That? You're, you're happens, right at the entrance. There's what enough. What happens light. if you choose to perceive if you don't have dark vision? Because you can't get worse than disadvantage. Right. You just, you, well, you just can't see anything. You can't, you can't see anything. You so just can't see. Because well, we, no, I know you can't see, but perception can be hearing. It in historical Dungeons and Dragons land, it would have been like I could have a monster here that's 35 feet from you, and you would not know that it exists until you move five feet forward. Forward because you could only see 30 feet forward but when you're with regular vision. But if you have dark vision wow. 60 feet, Smart. you could see that thing, right? right? And it was all about those kinds of, that, that, that's where lighting matters, as in like more of a dungeon. But even when you attack yeah. when you're blind, you attack at disadvantage. Yeah. So that it just doesn't even matter if you have dark vision. I'm just confused about that. Not that I give a fuck. I'll we could, we could go read Dark Vision right now. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. <laughs> you're, I at the en- you're, you're at the entrance. It doesn't I'm, mention it. Yeah. I'm it's very strange. It's in the, the dim light. environment yeah. rule section. Very strange. That dim light causes the lightly obscured effect, mm-hmm. and in a lightly obscured area, yeah. you have disadvantage on perception checks that rely on sight. Very strange. Oh, but you can still hear it. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I got a ten. This is not the place to simulate light, and with a ten, you notice the two things that I've described before. There is a structure, or at least a shape. It appears to be sitting in the center of the tunnel, and there's a large tarp over it. It looks large, and there's this sort of like house, sort of cabiny type vibe that's pushed right into the into the cabin, and it looks like it could handle four or five people, um, give or take, like a, like a guard tower almost. A little, uh, 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 gate key, uh, checking in area kind Guard of type house. operation or a house, but a little cottage type type. type I'm thing. automatically relaying all of this to Queenie and basically just just uh, leaving it up to her to decide how deep into this cavern she'd like to go. Well, these features would around. be evident to you as well, yeah. and you can see <clears throat> that the the light coming into this area. Um, uh, pushes uh, well beyond that tarped uh, structure that I mentioned, um, but the tunnel just seems to go deeper and deeper and deeper, almost perfectly straight. Um, I wouldn't go too far in. Uh, I would just like to check to see if I see any um, tracks that look like they would have been uh, at all recent, um, any signs that there have been um, any life in this place uh, at any point, trying to kind of suss out what it would be. Perception if there or survival, I think. I'll do survival. <laughs> Do you want me to be disadvantaged because I'm <coughs> You're blind? Fine. You're fine. Because I will be. Um, 26. Oh, wow. Um, you feel very confident that uh, maybe some beasts have wandered in and out of this space, but nothing like uh, <coughs> kobolds have visited uh, here. Um, it, it feels nearly abandoned, especially with the destruction of the t- uh, portal being one of this. All right, Scrim. If you want to go back and let the fellas know that it is, it seems to be safe for now. I'll continue to look around, see if I see anything, and wait for you here. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Are you afraid of walking out there by yourself? No, I'm afraid of leaving you here. I feel like oh, we should I'm just go right. back together real quick. Yeah, Safety and numbers buddy system and all that. Yeah, that's more than enough time for something to sneak in. How far away from the entrance are we? <laughs> You're at the entrance. Oh, we didn't go that far. Mm-mm. Oh, you, you, no, no, no. Uh, like, uh, may, I feel like maybe I should draw it. Oh. Yeah, let's do it. We Here. love maps. Sure. What is the shiny? Then I was just turn around, shout. Hey, 
Mm. I see that someone in chat said Queenie is legless. If that's true, then uh, Scrim is definitely Gimli. <laughs> I don't know how that works out, but I'll take it. It's uh, better than a lot of other things the scrim could have been. Um, yeah, I would, just, I, would just, I would just turn around <laughs> and shout to the crew then. There's, He's you know, scrimly. I wouldn't go anywhere. I would just be like, hey, get the fuck in here. You guys are making your way up a path, sort of like this, to this area. Uh -huh. right? This is where the threshold of the illusion would have been. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it is no longer. Okay. Ah, ah. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now <laughs> right. the tunnel right. needs to just go yeah. straight in. Ah. There's a tiny little outpost. Uh -huh. And there's a tiny little thing right here. Okay. And that's all you see. You guys are standing like right here. Oh, then I would literally just turn around and be like, get the fuck in here! Come on, it's safe. Queen says it's safe. Come on. Give me yeah, the yeah, camera, Queen. Yeah. Here's, here's the. What? <laughs> Come in! Come! <laughs> <laughs> it's <Right>. safe! <laughs> for, for our audience, fool of oh, no. a That's funny. This is not the right thing. What have I done? What did you hit? I need to do this. No. Oh. <laughs> I need to do. Where is it? Available for pre order. The crookedmoon.com, the terrible trio of adorable ah. plushies. Here it is. Okay. This is the path they're coming up. This is the cliff face of the mountain. This is where the actual illusion would have been, and you can see that there's a tiny little outpost cabiny uh, operation on, on one wall, and then there's this tarp structure here in the center, and the tunnel goes deep and deep and deep and deep. Light would shed into this, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty deep before you had to get to like pitch black USA. So the two dots represent where Scrim and Queenie currently are, and Barnabas and Taishan and Yornir are a little farther away. You know, Queenie, I'm going to be honest, I didn't need to be here for this one. <laughs> but I'm glad that I was able to keep an eye on you and make sure that you were safe. Yeah, you didn't really need to be here for this. But would you rather hang out with me or have your near telling you you're not worth anything? Oh, oh, infinitely, you, a hundred times over. I, you know, I thought fact, you were going to pick your near. No, no. I, in fact, I'll tell your near to his face. I, I guess sometimes I can't stand that guy. Oh, well... <laughs> I think he's all right. Yeah, I mean, he's okay, you know, I mean, we, we're surviving. He, he can be a bit like... We could be thriving. He could be, a, we could be 30, flirty and thriving. That's right. Yeah. How I miss 30, you? but you know, how, hey, there's always 40. How old are you, by the way? Uh, is that rude to ask a guy? A no, it doesn't bother me at all. You know, I, I don't really keep track of every birthday. I was somewhere in the upper 30s, you know. Really? Are you sure? Well, no, I mean, you know... You, you, Records get lost. I don't know when my birthday was, right? So I just existed one day. All of a sudden, I was hit with consciousness. I was like, oh, fuck, where am I, right? I'm five. Oh, fuck. I may be five. I could be four. Who knows? Oh. Were you ever a baby or goblin's babies? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there were, there were hundreds of us. I don't know why. I just kind of imagined you popping into existence exactly as you are right well, now. It was kind of like that, yeah, but only, like, you know, smaller version of me. The, the point is, I'm roughly 30-something, you know, 40s around the corner, but who's asking? I am. Taishen and Yornir and Barnabas <laughs> arrive next Fair. to you after you have Fair. this conversation, and you find yourself all standing looking at this tunnel entrance. Uh. Ooh, love us. <laughs> <laughs> I stab Yornir in the throat. I can't even do it. No. <laughs> Is uh, this like Brixie kicking uh, <laughs> Bitsy? <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, based on your shouting, I presume there is no danger. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Queenie checked. I think we're good, and, uh, you know, my yeah. shouting didn't draw anything in. There are, uh, aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead presence somewhere within six miles of us, but not in this tunnel. Within six miles. All right. At mile marker seven, though, there could be a door, a mundane door. Well, with a mundane lock. Mr. Fire Blossom, if you wouldn't mind uh, keeping a fire, keeping a flame for light, we'll go in and we'll listen. And we'll be careful, but quick. So we don't have to spend a minute longer in these dark depths than we need to. Does it look like the Dragonborn built these structures? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. De uh, certainly. 
Look at the architecture. Oh, you can cool. tell because of the <laughs> dragon borny features. <laughs> well, There's dragons I all think over them. that if we go deeper inside, we might find a dread against the DM. <laughs> you wow. continue to progress. Uh, <laughs> do, I'll say uh, to, to, uh, for the sake of brevity, you go in 30 feet, 60 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet to the threshold where it starts to get very dark. But you do not make it that far before you realize that there are grooves. Two deep grooves, wide lanes on either side in what is very clearly like a smooth ice floor. The surrounding craggly cave all around you is made of rock, but the uh, it is almost as if a river once flowed through this space and has frozen to a completely flat uh, uh, surface, with the exception of these two grooves on either side. Um, almost as though they were put there magically or manufactured, fashioned in some way. Before we move too far, I would want to at least just very quickly stick my head into both structures to get a sense of like what they might have been used for when this was an operation. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. Tai Shen want to help? Oh, oh, yes. Fuck off, you're near. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Perhaps. Oh, well, I will only roll one die then. Oh, look, I will help you. Look over there. <coughs> look there. Perhaps we can all it probably have calming help. Tea. I'm going to roll it anyway, but this doesn't count. Fuck, it's one better. <laughs> uh, 15. Uh, you wouldn't need uh, more than a 10 to see that these uh, this structure is empty. If this had had tables and beds and things like that in it, the only thing that's left remaining is the bleached wood upon uh, that it was built on, that has been getting hit by the sun year after year for untold centuries. It's amazing it's still standing, but it's been preserved here. Um, you don't see food. You think briefly, oh, well, the wood could be burned, but that is all that the structure represents to you. When you look inside the, the window or open the door and creep in briefly, it's like it's like uh, walking into an apartment that hasn't been it doesn't have any furnishings. Interesting. I would just collect a like one day's bundle worth of wood, firewood. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can pull some floorboards or or, or uh, uh, the the shutters or, or something. You 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 pull that and you are now possess one bundle of uh, sticks. I will catch up with the rest of them. And you catch up with the rest of them. That's all that you're presented with, is this long, um, sort of almost endless ice tunnel, a large tarped uh, structure in the center, and the um, structure that Yornir describes as being empty. The grooves that you described, does it almost look like tracks? Mm. Or are they they too wide, too close, too deep? They seem very track-like. Yeah. Very much. So I'm picturing them like on an old road where there's lots of wagons, like the the wagon. Yeah, it seems like worn. Like worn. So not intentionally cut out. Like like grooves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not hard angles necessarily, but definitely um, deep enough to hold like wheels or um, like a carriage or something Mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Roger. Wow. You know, here we go. It's just a kind of a straight tunnel. It's a little weird. I, I don't know why we built it as a straight tunnel. It's just a straight, it just goes. And that's just, that's it. Well, they're connecting to cities of their empire. It's far more convenient to go straight through the mountain than go over it. Well, what are the chances? You don't hit rock that you don't have to go on. It's a little weird to me, a little well, suspicious. We have no idea what sort of strange magical technology we'll oh, find in the ruined cities. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, yeah, you don't expect to see this kind of craftsmanship outside of dwarven holds. At least not that I've been to. Perhaps this is... We were thinking that these were portals using teleportation magic, but perhaps they were just illusions hiding tunnels beneath the mountains. Ah, did we... Did we really mess up on the last one we saw? Perhaps if we were to bore, not that we had the capability to do so, perhaps the tunnel was collapsed hundreds of feet in. I see what you're saying. Perhaps this is all there is. There is no teleportation magic, but some great underway beneath the continent. Make a perception check. Well, Mr. Fire Blossom, you sit in the middle with your light. I'll be in the front. 
all of us? And we'll all, yeah. we'll, oh. we'll all huddle yeah, every, around Everyone you. hears or sees something in this moment as you were talking. Perception. <laughs> 19. Woo! 22. 23. Ah, damn it! <laughs> Not good. <laughs> you're near Taisha and uh, uh, Barnabas. You're facing into the tunnel because you reached and met 12. with uh, Scrim and Queenie. You are both facing them, looking out. And so, uh, as you're de- de- can't wait to get eaten from behind. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> the boring tunnel is uh, no, no. You, uh, something's boring into my tunnel. <laughs> you uh, look forward, and you realize you're looking at the back of what I've been describing as a tarp structure. And ah. There's just enough wind for you to hear the <laughs> flapping of that canvas, and underneath you can see that there are two almost uh, uh, sled-like um, rails underneath uh, what appears to be a, perhaps a uh, vehicle of some kind. Queenie and I can see it? Queenie and you both see this, but you're talking, they're not facing this as you are looking at the back of this. Ah. Uh, dog roofs. That's strange. Are you guys ready to get going? <laughs> Just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> Hark! Pray tell! What do we see, Queenie? You really are just scrim, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> there's this, there's, there's no difference between you and scrim. Okay, there's some difference. Let's, <laughs> let's, like let's, the same let's not be any 6 4 in Rose Park. Andy wouldn't have thrown away the 77 gold pieces. Let's, not be, let's not be cruel here. <laughs> <laughs> like, just oh my <laughs> gods! Guys, look at that! What are the chances? How did I miss this? Ah, uh, yeah, we really gotta take our time, you know, and, and not be in such a rush. I mean, Yoni is always like, we gotta hurry up, we gotta hurry up, go faster. You know, he never stops talking, he talks a mile a minute. We gotta slow down sometimes and smell the roses, all right? Ha! Huh. Think about all the things that you said to Scrim. You said that he's worthless, that he can't, he's never going to accomplish anything. I've never said this. You say this in your sleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're in your ears for hundreds of years, he has no idea his sleep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked. Uh, and Ooh. some of those things are even true. And I tear the tarp away. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you tear the tarp away? Ta da! Oh. oh my god. Oh! Whoa. You see what is uh, very similar, but not quite the same as the river sledge uh, or sled uh, oh. that you saw uh, in the outside world. Um, but this one is built to uh, traverse this strange tunnel. It's facing the wrong direction, but it is definitely uh, there with these two huge rails. Uh, and it, suddenly it clicks how these grooves would be made. It would be uh, these kinds of vessels traveling back and forth uh, uh, over the, the mm. ice, icy surface. This seems to be some way of, of transporting yourself. The mast uh, uh, looks like it has a uh, sort of long crossbeam at the top with two little bells on either side, and this um, uh, wider pole where you could attach or hinge uh, very thick, uh, this tarp, uh, as an example, uh, the um, some kind of a sail. Uh, at the front, uh, in our parlance, uh, it would be called a cow catcher. But in uh, the mm. world of actual train engineering, I understand it's called a pilot. I had to look that up. Uh, in the with the flourish with which I ripped the tarp away, yeah. uh, it, it kind of goes towards the mouth of the of the cave, and the wind whips up and takes the tarp away. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, it disappears. Oh, we that, didn't we? It disappears. A bird. Let's look at a 400 pound tarp. Covered like an 80 foot truck. Just kidding. Um, you realize that if you were able to rotate this object, that you would be able to set it on its grooves and continue into the into the cave. Though how it would be propelled forward is still a mystery. I like it be good. Even underground, at the very least, we can have a ship. There, it is facing the wrong direction. Oh, we can turn it around. There's got to be some sort of system. Otherwise, we can use our brute strength. We have that in abundance. I will basically look around, see if there's any way where we can, you know, I'll check the controls. I'll, cl- I'll climb up on top, check the controls, see if there's any turnaround. Otherwise, I'm just going to fucking... Uh, make an investigation check. Ooh. 
Can I um, assist him? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would. Uh, you, you hop on. I'll, I'll look underneath <laughs> to see if there's some sort of like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, sixteen. Mark, Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, there's, oh, yeah. Not, right. there's not a. Unfortunately, Damn. but I should have, I should have thought of that. That's yeah, badass. Yeah. Sixteen. Uh, with a sixteen, um, you find that uh, this has been an emptied sled. Uh, however, um, there's plenty of room if you wanted to put supplies, and there's plenty of places to sit. There's like a bench along the end. Um, there's a rail on both sides. Uh, you see in the center, though, that there's a very unusual, um, almost like a figurehead is what you think of, like at the end of a, a, a ship that you would normally be familiar with. There is this um, almost statue and it's facing where the sail would be. And it's a dragon with its oh. mouth closed, grinning, uh, looking terribly forward with two smaller wings, just sort of arching towards the front of this uh, vessel. You don't see a do to turn around button, however. Uh, that being said, you, you got up on top of it. This is not, it's on ice and it's not that heavy. It's possible that with enough brute force you might be able to turn the fucking thing. Mr. Yornier. Yes. Uh, give me some leverage on the other side. I'll hop back down. If anyone else wants to help push. <laughs> you look around <laughs> and then you like look up and like Scrim's already like sitting on the bench like uh, like foot kicked up. <laughs> yeah. and, like, uh, Nah, no, you guys got it. It's all right. A coconut drink. Very green. <laughs> very, <laughs> very green room, Andy. Yeah. I got it. And so, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> ah, you guys got it. I'm Tai Chan assists you as well. So I would go to the opposite corner. Yeah, I'm here and you're so near. So I'm gonna go here. Why don't you start uh, dolling, dollhousing Let's yourselves? Let's do it. Let's fucking dollhouse this shit. Ah, let me accidentally turn on the. The uh, seats in the back here, right? <laughs> <laughs> You said there's this, like a bench in the back, yeah, and then there's yeah, like, seats yeah, on the side yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely, I'm kicked up in the back. Oh, I will also help because I'm, because Barnabas is strong, and Queenie, what are you doing? Uh, I'm not helping. <laughs> are you just hanging out with Scrim? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scrim and I already did the work by coming in here by ourselves. Uh, you don't so have to weird. help, but your swarm could assist. Yeah, with the push. yeah, but they are very tired. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Every single bee has a little drink. <laughs> They've all got cocktails. Oh, there's, what, what is that? Mead, in mead, right? Is honey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all drinking some mead. That's amazing. Um, they got little, little the tiny bees. bee tankers. I'm not even going to make you roll for it. You are able to slowly <laughs> start to turn this. And you do so, it is slick on this ice, and uh, it is hard to get a grip with your feet, but that also benefits you because you're able to turn it. And when it, once it is 180 degrees or so, you need only attach the sail and find some way to propel this thing forward. And we think the tarp is the sail. No. Or it has a separate sail. This is a separate sail. You suspect that the tarp was huge, right? It, it covered oh, yeah. the whole thing. Um, you find a sail. <laughs> oh, I could have sworn you said the tarp was the sail. That's what I thought too. I, I, I would say that you could fashion a sail uh, or I, I don't. I don't want to spend time on. We're it's ten ten. So fucking, <laughs> you, you, you get a goddamn Derek, sale. That is such a fucking move. <laughs> oh, but there's a sale. <laughs> well, of course you know that they would keep the canvas here. <laughs> ah, come on, Barnabas, hurry up. This is like right up your alley, right? Come on, Mr. Savage Goats. We taught you better than that on the Moorbound. No, I was a lowly top man. <laughs> you were observing, and you remember. I was drunk on brandy. Uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> my, my crab legs will uh, erupt from my back, and I'm just going to basically climb up, and I'll pull, heave the canvas up, and basically get all the rigging to where I presume fashion the the sail. You make very secure work, and eventually you make your way down. Um, even though there is the sound of at the at this entrance, there's not forceful enough wind to push this sail up. Forward. Jacaris! <laughs> the funny. sail suddenly unfurls. Um, uh, very funny. All right, so we, do we think that this uh, this thing comes to life and on breeze? the back there is a lever. Oh. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you on the back there does appear to be some form of of uh, uh, handle or wheel or drive. Oh, is there a lever back there? Huh? Uh, oh. 
this one, and I'll hold the lever. Just see what happens. It's on the back of the actual uh, dragon statue. I pull the lever. You go up, you pull it. Oh, this one? And mechanically, you have to use the use an object action Whoa! to move it one notch. And you can see that there are. Uh, this is very fun. Six notches. And you move it into from its resting position where it was into its first position. And the mouth of the dragon opens a little bit. And you hear the sound of uh, uh, wind being almost pulled in as you sort of like pull, as you turn the lever, it sort of backs up just a little bit and lets a little of the air in. And it is hyper focused. <coughs> and the sail does push forward just a little bit. And all of a sudden, you all feel the ah, ah, There we go, lads! You're going two miles per hour at this speed. <laughs> oh, everybody hold on to your butts! And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use object, use object, you're use gonna, object, you're use gonna object! Use, okay, you use object and you get four miles per hour. Again? And another six seconds pass oh. and you get use object and now you're going 15 miles per hour. Again. As this no, not so fast. continues to push and push and push and push. <laughs> You use object again. All of a sudden, you are rocketing down this at 30 miles per hour. You're also afforded something that you did not know you would benefit from. Whatever attunement or connection this ship has with the tunnel itself, perhaps it's the minerals in the tunnel, but the tunnel alights. <gasps> All of a sudden, it's like uh, uh, as the ship is uh, is getting there, the walls themselves are, are becoming illuminate, uh, 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 luminescent, glowing, and you are afforded a tremendous amount of light. You can see it's... Is it like uh, the tunnel in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Shadows are moving back and forth across your face, exactly right. We see a right. chicken get decapitated. You see a chicken get <laughs> uh, decapitated. Uh, <laughs> all this violent imagery... No, 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 you don't see any of that. You it's instead, like the Frozen 2, you is, are, is it better? 30 miles per hour uh, for you would be a shockingly fast. Oh yeah, we're cooking. Oh. You are, you, a, 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 I'm hanging on to my hat, hold the on, fastest, the lever. The fastest ship in the world doesn't go 30 miles per hour. Yeah. You'd have to be a soaring eagle to be going 30 miles per hour. However, there is another gear. Uh, I have heard your nears shouting, and as chaotic and wild uh, as I am, I am hesitant to, to, to yeah. go into that yeah. other gear. As I'm holding <laughs> on to my hat and holding on to this lever, ah and I'm looking at Barnabas and I'm hearing his wild screaming, and, and I'm trying to see where we're headed, and I'm not quite ready yet to kick it into the next view. It, it is, this it is, is terrifying. Flying, it is flying None of us have moved this fast. The, looking backwards behind you, you can see the tunnel entrance, which is this massive, tall opening disappearing into nothingness. You are traveling faster than you could have possibly do, do I get the impression that we don't have to steer because of the, the grooves that you set style? into the, into the yeah, grooves yeah, and all of a sudden something. you realize that you're on a track. This is an engineered path. No wonder the kobolds are able to traverse the yep. car so quickly. They travel Damn. under the mountains. I I look, right. I look yeah. to your Very ear, cool. and you are you are still kind of giving me like I'm a like, no. If you could like You're see pale. through my fur, I'm like I'm I'm, I'm definitely a little pale, a little damp. Uh, I'm I'm sweating a little bit. I look to Queenie. What are you doing in this moment? Queenie's um, standing at the back. Um, the bees are just kind of like flying against the wind. And she's just kind of standing there like uh, George Washington at the front of the boat. <laughs> she's very excited. Hell the yeah. wind in her fur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look oh, yeah. For the sake of three dimensionality, because I don't have a three dimensional <laughs> ship, <laughs> right? Flapping. This is the sail. Yeah. It's high up, right? You can pass underneath yeah, yeah, yeah. it and arrive at the front just at the pilot here. So you are, on the you are traveling this yeah. direction, so you would be yeah, literally be in that front. I'm by the lever, I guess. Oh, I'm, shit, I'm um, you're, you're here in, at the yep. lever, uh, Barnabos. I'd be holding on is on right top here. of the world. I, the rest uh, of you, yeah, you are you are flying, and yet she's it is, rosing and jacking. It is shit. a smooth experience. Um, you're near. It's going to take a while, I think, for you to get used to this experience. But Barnabos, this almost feels like being on a ship. This feels like being on a. Uh, it, 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 once the rushing of the wind uh, uh, acclimates, once you are are, are 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 settled, it's like standing in any other room. I see, and then I look to Barnabas, and I want to see his reaction as the last person that I'm looking around. I I, I, I assume Tai Shen's hanging in there. He's doing okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Tai Shen. He's probably a little closer to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to your near. Yeah, than yeah his Barnabas. robes are flapping. But I want to judge Barnabas' reaction as well. How? Uh, I'd probably be like hanging from the rigging. 
like just like kind of looking over the side, like like trying to see how like like way far off to the side, and I'll be like I'll feel the wind in my in my hair as and I'll say, hey, this is the only way to travel, Mister Stamiscott. Faster! I I catch his eyes and I hear him say this and I say, ha, ha now or never! And I kick it into the final gear. You push it into the final gear and this is the largest boost yet. From two miles per hour to four miles per hour to 15 miles per hour to 30, you jump to 50 miles per hour. And all of a sudden you are going at what feels like light speed. Screaming. And that's where we'll take a quick break. Oh, oh. man! What an awesome... You are rocketing through this magically created tunnel, this tunnel that may have been crafted over many decades or perhaps even centuries, uh, feeling the occasional jolt left and jolt right of the uh, uh, grooves as they continue to keep you uh, uh, straight as an arrow uh, through this deep, dark tunnel uh, that is strangely illuminated by its magical presence, by its very uh, draconic essence. And you are starting to get used to it and starting to feel your way around. Um, the wind is rushing past you, but uh, chiefly you just feel that you are moving very quickly. It's easy to get dizzy looking left and right, right at the rocks that are f uh, flying past you. But if you uh, fix your eyes on the on the point that you're headed or backward. Um, it, it, it's easy to stable or just to look at in, it looking into each other's faces. I'll also note here a few additional features that I uh, hadn't mentioned when you first started rocketing, which is to say, at the heart of the figurehead, um, on on its uh, front, there appears to be something like a sapphire, a small like domed almost uh, gem like uh, rock. Uh, and in it, you can see that there's sort of a five-pointed light uh, that, that's in the center, and it, it seems to be moving very, very, very slowly. It seems to be an indication of what time of day it is, even in this dark tunnel. Oh! Uh, additionally, Damn. Um, and Yornir, I think you might have been the first to notice, uh, or perhaps Tai Shen, but here at the back, um, the, uh, underneath the bench, you find uh, tethers. You find what are clearly strong corded ropes uh, that can be hitched onto your person uh, or around your belt or, 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 or to uh, tied to you. Um, these seems to be, uh, Taishan jokingly calls them sled belts. Um, in case you fall off, these would keep you affixed to the ship uh, regardless of how fast it's traveling. And those are the additional features that you all start to notice as you climatize to this space because Pretty soon, 15, 30, 45 minutes, an hour has gone by with you moving at this 50 mile per hour rate, just screaming no underneath these mountains. Oh, I, I immediately open up one of the, the seats and I, oh, <laughs> I fasten it like three times around my waist. Oh, oh. Queenie, can you, can you sense if we're heading towards anything bad? Have we gone six miles yet? Uh, uh, you would have gone hour. six miles very quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, duh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, yeah, been, it's been an hour, so that would have been... Um, Derek, do it. Uh, I, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> my, 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 my lips are too dry. I'll there just fucking split my lip. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll use primeval awareness again to uh, see if I can sense anything. Uh, okay, you make a sensation and uh, you have this sense, you, have, you expand your awareness out and um, once again, uh, you feel that the, uh, if there are creatures, they're well, well above you, thousands Let's of go. feet above you at the surface of these mountains that you're traveling underneath. You do not get a sense that there is any immediate presence or danger of those types of creatures. Looks good so far, you're near. Okay. You just need to calm down, buddy. All right. <laughs> Don't tell me you're getting seasick, Mr. Yarnier. <laughs> I'll lean over the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's flat as a sheet of ice. This is easy. I'm having the time of my life. I think uh, I think seeing the confidence in Barnabas and getting used and acclimated to the speed, uh, Scrim would still be hanging on to this thing for dear life, but he would also be like hooting and hollering uh, along with Barnabas and like loosening up a little bit and like enjoying himself. 
It would be easy to uh, enjoy the experience. This is so unusual, and after so much... Um, the last time you had experience with speed like this, you were uh, uh, on a... Uh, escape vessel, trying to escape a nautiloid flying through yeah, space. Yeah. Uh, uh, you watched as uh, you experienced it traveling through uh, the sky at this speed. But this feels controlled, and uh, and you feel like you have control being the person who's manning the lever, um, should you need to. Yeah, I would, even though I'm having fun, and, shut, and shut the rest yeah. of the, the group might not think that, you know, they, they probably wouldn't tell others that I'm responsible. I would still be trying to look ahead and see if I need to slow us down. Uh, you know, at a moment's sort of, notice. You're sort of glancing and looking. Not um, knowing if nothing would yeah. decelerate quickly or not. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Another hour passes. <laughs> Perhaps you should test the deceleration so we know how it functions in case we need it. <laughs> What's the fun of that, Yoni? <laughs> Oh, Have a little oh. faith, Mr. Yarnator, isn't that what you're all about? You hear this sound, it's funny. and it's like, <laughs> like a dunk, a, a, a crashing sound, and you look up and you can see the um, two bells on the crossbeam at the very top oh. of, the, of the sail are moving back and forth, and you have just enough time, uh, for those of you who are wit uh, quick enough, to turn around and realize that there are bars that have intentionally passed uh, uh, th oh. through and clinked them. That's how trains work, right? Mile mm -hmm. markers, or or yeah, that's that's Taurus telling you to to slow, to, down. To, to slow down. Ah, ah, well, probably like one notch you per think? clinker. Uh, okay, and I will uh, I'll I'll bump it up one to go you, to start you, to slow down. You start to slow down, and you hear that second clink. The uh, oh, the you might want to do it again. Ah, okay, all right, I'm I'm going again. Dropping to thirty miles per hour. I do it again. Dropping to fifteen miles per hour. Uh, so you very clink you're doing. And yes. you see yeah. it very, very, very slowly. You can see these bars now uh, as you're traveling 15 miles per hour. Clink and sort of move past. Again. And uh, sure enough, uh, as you drop the speed, you see one of these outposts. <gasps> oh, that's cool. And you see that it opens up into this great, uh, almost ballroom expanse with this large domed area. It's been carved out especially. The grooves are going to come to a stop. You're going to be able to pull into uh, almost a hub of sorts. Uh, and you're going to, uh, you see that there is an outpost, and you see that there are multiple different hall, uh, uh, tunnels that you might be able to face your way down. Oh, like a switching station. Oh, mm -hmm. my god. So do we need to come to a stop to do that? I, I would You would make that decision pretty quickly okay. and, and, and get down to the like two miles per hour. You maybe even hit the two miles per hour before you just get well in. ahead just to make absolutely fucking sure that you can reach this hub area and eventually you come to a, uh, you, you, you close it off and you slide, slide, slide to a halt. And, and there you find yourself. And the tunnel is still illuminated by this by the presence of this ship. Um, I apologize if I missed it. Did you say how many switches or, or options we have? There three. appears to be three tunnel entrances okay. with their own sets of grooves moving forward. And uh, you have a sense, looking at the top of each of these tunnels, that there are waypoints. The same uh, icons that match the cairns on the uh, oh. other co coast. One of them is very clearly matching with the fishing uh, uh, village that you uh, initially would have gone to. Yep. Uh, the, probably the path that the um, kobolds take, or at least this would get you there eventually. And then another one uh, that seems to be taking to you uh, straight north, Taishen uh, interprets. This one he's not as familiar with. We don't have as much familiarity with those cairns, but the path to the right is gilded in silver, and it looks like the one that points to a city, the one that he also noted would have gone east through the mountains on the cairns that you'd seen, which I mentioned fucking two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way. Aye. East from where we, even where, where we're at? Straight so, through the mountains. And you have your staff. It would be going east-ish, <gasps> starting, to, starting to curve to the right. If north is this way, Yes, I have the silver. This is the direction we need to go. All right. Stand back. Ship. Turn! You all get out and slowly push the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and for like three minutes. Turn! Turn! Like you said. Turn! Everybody in the, the A little more? Scrim, won't you help? No! A little more! I'm directing. 
thing. This is called delegation. We experience a Conan the Barbarian montage of us. Oh, equipment. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Great montage. Uh, and then once we're in position, <laughs> and I feel like we're lined up, I would call everybody back in and say, uh, all right, is everyone buckled up? Wait. Uh, what, what? Do we want to see if there's anything we can take with us in this outpost? I don't it's, think it's a bad idea to look around. It may be uh, long abandoned, but perhaps something we can give as tribute. I think our kobold friends would have picked this clean. It's not like this is abandoned. God, let's just take five minutes, real quick. We're stealing I one mean, of their vessels, clearly. The, you would think that, but then we found that house that had all of those candles that burned for eight hours. So oh, yeah, we right. might find something that they didn't pick up. Five minutes. We'll tear it apart. I'll think my I'll anger. nod. And I feel like there's things that need smashing just to kind of take a look. I'm being very reckless. This is a similarly sized cottage. You um, oh. walk up. If I find a house with a bunch of clay pots, I pull out my short sword. And I go, ha! <laughs> and I collect all of the rubies. A bunch of rubies oh, yeah. uh, floating in space, and you just walk I just in. run over them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just attract and pull, pull into your fucking body. Yep. Um, there aren't any uh, pots, Damn. unfortunately, but there is a uh, door and a uh, scrim. Uh, as eager as you are to see like what could be in this inner outpost, you push it forward. Um, this does appear to be very similar, but it is furnished. Uh, unlike the one that you saw mm. at the uh, other end, at the entrance uh, to this tunnel, you see, in my notes I have right here, from two years ago, <laughs> you kinda, um, that this looks like a post where there would have been like a rotating crew. Not not something that people would show up to on a day a day to day uh, type operation, yeah. but something where you would, you would either live and have uh, supplies delivered to you, or something where you maybe like spend a week and then rotate out and yeah. go back to the city where you're from, the fishing village or or, or, or what have you. Um, uh, there don't seem to be those supplies, but that's the deduction you can make as you start to go in through the different rooms and start to investigate this uh, uh, overall space. Make an investigation check and advantage if anyone is coming with you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm coming with you. I'm coming to help. All right, let's take a look. Investigation. I'm not very good at that. Uh, within the, ah, ah. <laughs> Can we twist? We're twisting twice. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Uh -huh. character in every... ah, ah. 19. Oh! oh. oh. Woo. <laughs> With a 19, you are thinking about your experience with these Dragonborn, what limited experience you've had. You look under the mattresses, you look under the beds, and then you look at the fireplace and you think, well, when we were in that village. Probably just a bunch of spiders. And you pull some of the boards in front of the fireplace away, and you find four additional candles. Hot nice. damn! Brought to nine. <laughs> nice, Mr. Stavis Gaunch. And uh, who else is with Scrim in this moment? You're all sort of, oh, Queenie? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're also uh, uh, looking around. Um, you are, are doing this uh, same work, and you're watching as he pulls the, the candles out from between the floorboards. And turning, uh, you start to like get a sense of the space, and you see the entrance. But having walked through it, you're now looking at the other side and above the entrance. You spy an effigy. An eyeball. It needs to be hookshotted. Mm -hmm. you, <laughs> you look forward and you can see something made of bones, <gasps> of sticks and tendons, and it looks like a, like a snowflake. Looks like it has Whoa. six points to it. It has been assembled to look like the delicate little flakes that occasionally land on your hand, so symmetrical and perfect. That strikes you as odd given everything that you've seen here and how f empty these spaces tend to be. Um, but you also are just listening to Scrim's exclamations of joy as he pulls out one candle, two candle. How, <laughs> That's, how pretty good That's a pretty good impression. Oh, one candle. Hakuna We're gonna Matata. <laughs> We're going to play ten candles. Um, and it's, is it like just hanging there by like a nail or how, like how is it held up? Uh, it appears to have um, uh, been yeah, I would say that there's definitely been some like pushes of like some kind of bone into the uh, into the surface of the wood so that it could be hung there and then set into place. 
Uh, I would walk up to it and then um, with my what is it? That's that one thing that I can do. Your bees. <laughs> yeah, my bees. I can't remember what it's, it's called. It's like a mage hand. You should do bees about it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I can fly you. basically. It's writhing tide. Um, I gain a flying speed of ten feet. Oh yeah, more uh, than enough. Can hover, so That's I'd like cool. to, to get close to it yeah, and inspect it further. You gesture um, See or if it communicate. Has any magical do, do, do you do you do you um, how do, what does that look like? Do you just like think it and then all of a sudden the bees I, know I just, to assemble underneath yeah, you? Yeah, and, I would and, say okay, so. Okay, so that happens and you're able to get right up next to it without having alerted any of the others. Um, make an arcana check to see if there's any magical properties to it and make a... Uh, I would say, a, I would say a nature check. Or survival, your choice, whichever proficiency you prefer. Okay. Um, I'll twist the uh, survival. I'll do one twist. One twist, yeah. Well, 18, 18 That's for really survival. Good. And then good. 19 for arcana. 18 and 19. Oh, shit. Uh, with a 19 for Arcana, um, it does not thrum the way a magical item does. If this does have magical consequences, it's not innately magical itself. And it feels like it is made of bone and tendon and, and, and what I described before. It, it, it feels crudely crafted. Hmm. The thing that strikes you, especially though, is the nature of the bones themselves feel very Unusual, unlike bones you've seen before. They're almost uh, sickly like lime green, and they have these markings all up and down uh, and up and down them as if they had to be scraped very, very roughly, almost as if someone was trying to use them to make fire. But all along every surface of all of these bones, there are these deep ruts and scratches and markings. Uh, I am going to take it, if I can. Yeah, I, I would say that it's a, uh, uh, to you would be the size of a large shield, but you are able to lift oh, it big. out of place, and wow. you're able to... Is it light? Yeah, it, it's... I would imagine it's made of bone, not too heavy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's light enough. It's, it, it's going to count as a two on, on your inventory if you plan on keeping it on your person, but... Is it kind of like a, like one of those big dream catchers you yeah. see that, that you hang exactly over the door? Right. Okay. But in this case, it has this uh, very this obvious fuck. snowflake yeah. uh, inference. <gasps> What'd you find? I'm not sure. It's some weird green bone triangle snowflake thing. I'm going to take it to Yornir and see oh. if he knows anything about it. Very charming. Great idea. Charming? Yeah, I love it. We can hang it up in the ship. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you like it, I, it's not my decor preference. I'm much more of a farmhouse type girl, but if it's, you know... What? No, I'm just listening. Oh, no, I don't, I don't know what else to say. All right, well... I, I don't know much about decor. I think it's lovely. You want it? No, no, I, well, I mean, if you're offering. Can I ask your near about it first, and then you can have it? Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think it's just a, a wonderful little thing to brighten up the ship. Okay. Well, I love how positive you are, Scrim. You know, today has been pretty nice. Yeah, you've been doing a great job, Captain, in that ship thing. Oh, it's nothing. It's really just a lever that goes two directions. But who else is going to pull it but you? Probably Barnabas, but I'll take what I can get. It's fine. It's all right. It's good. Let's let's go. We'll talk to you and we'll hang many, that up. How many candles did you get? We got four more. We got nine now. That was unbelievable. You just have an ear for these things. I mean, you have a way of looking through somebody's floorboards. I'm very good at stealing. <laughs> I've noticed. You want to go talk to the rest of them now? I do. All I right. very, very really go. do. <laughs> you go first. All I'll right. You. I will be checking the rigging. Yeah. To make sure, when I realize that there's not a ton to smash, and I'm like, eh, never mind, they got it. Uh, I'll just make sure that everything that I fasten, check, check all my knots. I presume that it would hold up, but I've never done, I've never check. done rigging at that speed before. Right. right so right, I right. want to make sure that they would hold up. Um, you check it to your satisfaction. <laughs> At, at no point, Never I'm, I'm not going to make you make a dexterity check or a, like a not making check. Uh, you pass because of your experience being what it is. You cannot fail at this. Yeah, it's like a 26. Uh, with, with the 10, 20, 30 minutes it would have been, you 
double check it, triple check it, look at the knot, look at it from all angles. Um, by the time uh, they return with the effigy and the candles, uh, and smiles on their faces, because things are looking up for uh, Team Icebound. Team Scrim, more like. Sure. <laughs> um, one candle, two candle. Uh, As we you- are getting closer to the ship, <laughs> Queenie and I are both like, Yorni, we've got something! We're like, we're Yorni, like yelling. Yeah, you can hear the this. screams. By the time that happens, the... Um, hey, you <laughs> no, you're going, you're mayor. You feel especially you're secure. Mayor. <laughs> and uh, you even think to check the tethers and make sure that those were secured underneath the benches where they mm. were originally yeah, being cables. pulled. Taishan is still cables. still wearing his, feeling a little wary about the space, and uh, one of them could have come free, but you've undone that with a 26. Mr. Fire Blossom, now I, I usually appreciate your company, but you have not been quiet a moment this trip. Can you please just let me focus? Classic. I will be sitting off near near the sled, but just sitting on the ground, meditating, maybe lit just a little bit of incense, trying to center myself. And, and then you hear, when I say your, <laughs> you say oh. near, your. Near. Your. Near. Your. Near. Your. We found something. We found something for you. Well, what is it? Look at this! And we have this horrific <laughs> and I, I hold it, effigy. I hold it up with the bees and scrims on one side going <sighs> like this and I'm on the Ta-da. other side going like this. Oh, Look man. at this. Pass it down. Hey, well, I guess I'm probably still taller yeah. than both of you sitting down. Uh, give it here. You absolutely <clears throat> are. I apologies. I'm still centering myself after the ride. Uh, I want to look at it and see if it reminds me of anything, any of the cultures or customs that um, the various peoples of Mamut uh, might do. I mean, I'm sure that I've, you know, I'm my thing is more runes, but I've I'm sure encountered other cultures that that make little effigies and fetishes and things like that. Survival. That is pretty good. <laughs> Uh, survival is a, uh, what's a 15 plus 8? It's a 23. Yeah, 23. Oh. You recognize the cool. same markings that Queenie does, and you see uh, that this, um, uh, this is something that you would be able to make with bones and tendon. Uh, it would take some time, right? But eventually when it cures, it actually holds its structure, and it's quite, it's quite sturdy. It won't fall apart in your hands very easily. Um, but it's the smell that is the doorway into unlocking where this came from. This has a like briny smell. This smells sour, almost. It's as if uh, perhaps this creature were, uh, it was it was either uh, dousing it in some form of citrusy something, or it was uh, itself uh, innately uh, acidic. In this way, but you get this. You get this. Meaning smell. the creature that the sinew is from, or, either either or. The or. Bone it's, or. it's hard to tell if okay. it was treated intentionally, oh. or it's or if the creature itself was uh, one of those fucking like a sour from elemental from yeah. an alien or something. Right? Oh yeah, like that. Holy that you, you, that that is what you get hmm. with the twenty three. Um, is this additional information? Isn't it beautiful? I was thinking about hanging it up on the ship. It is very large. It is to smell that sourness. Oh yeah, kind of reminds me of home. <laughs> this was made for some purpose. What that purpose is, I do not know. It, do you want to take it? Ah, I would just like that. Just thought I would brighten things up. We're having a lovely day. There's a little bit of serendipity hanging over the door, and I, we figured we'd bring it back to the ship and then and, and maybe take it with us. But you, you, you're all, I know they call me Mr. Bones, but you know, <laughs> you're really the bone guy. Uh, I mean. Scrim really likes interior design, and he was feeling like it might home up the place a little bit. Does this feel at all dragony, dragonborny, or like, does it feel out of place? Given what I know about the culture, it seems extremely out of place. <laughs> How? I don't know. I just kind of like it. 
It speaks to me. This is not... This should not be here. All right, well, we can get it out of here. Whoa, whoa. Well, let's not be so hasty. What do, you, what do you mean doesn't belong here? Like, doesn't belong with us on the ship, or it doesn't belong here? What, what you've come to learn about these uh, uh, ancient dragonborn who once perhaps ruled this land, based on what you've been told, is that they uh, were great survivalists. They were connected to nature. They had these villages and everything that had bounce. They uh, had control over magics. Right. They had the ability to create these illusory doors and perhaps uh, 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 bore tunnels underneath mountains, right? They were not primitives that would create an effigy like this. Like naturalists, right? They weren't, okay. This is not part of the dragonborn culture. This was not made by them or the kobolds. Do we know what kind of bones these green bones are? Is the green natural, can you tell? It is old. I can try. I, I want to see if I can f suss out what type of animal or creature these bones might be from at all, based on the shape, the length. Um, mm. While you're doing that, I will uh, say, ship leaves the harbor five minutes! <laughs> Next bell, we leave! <laughs> You're like swinging a watch, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, make. I don't have a whistle. A history or you nature do? check. Oh no, Barnabas does. Oh. I was gonna give him a whistle. Eh. Yeah. Bosun's whistle. Mm -hmm. Can I twist this? Yeah. yeah. Twice? I think it's pretty important. Do it twice. Yeah, it's very important. I think I know, but I'm not gonna say anything because Barnabas doesn't know. Oh. Oh! Oh, oh, 21. yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 Nature what? is what I would want with. I think that's good That's enough. what I would have gone with, too. You good spend a little more time with it, and it's the color of the bone, the smell you start to put together. This has a... This, this came from a species uh, very similar to the ogres. There's a giant quality. This is the bone from oh. some creature that almost certainly was related or connected in some way. These are not the bones of beasts or monsters. These are giant bones. What? Giant bones. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh God. Oh God, are you saying we shouldn't have touched this? I mean, you can tell they're giant bones by looking at them. Look at how big they are. I understand they're giant bones. I mean, like, capital G <laughs> giant ah. bones. Yeah, I know. They're real big. The ogres. These are ogre bones? Myself. Ah. What? These are your bones? We are all of giant kind. Oh, they're giant kin bones. You should just said that in the first place. Uh-huh. What? Now what? What does that mean? And that explains the size. The, this was made for a purpose. Some sort of ritual, some sort of protective spell or hex, or perhaps part of their religion, but not in reverence to Anum as far as I know. Uh -huh. Do I recall what the kobold said about the great army that serves the Prince of Wrath. I'm That's sure interesting. I, I think they referenced that it wasn't just dragons. That's, I just want, Mikey believes that this is the effigy of another culture of Drakkar that we've not yet encountered. Okay. And I don't know if Barnabas, <laughs> if they're like a fucking calling the, like, you know, they're like, uh, they're uniting all of the tribes. Like, you know, mm -hmm. of the, the badass heavy metal tribes of fucking Jakar <laughs> to, like, fucking go to war with a giant black uh, or white dragon. Classic barbarian queen stuff. Yes. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do I get the sense, like, if I'm listening to this while I'm kind of getting ready to go? I'm, like, right next yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember what, what I told you. Uh, I don't know. To make sure that I am giving you the full information that... Barnabas should have. I remember they said that they were one of the clans, the 
Hammer, Frost they Hammer, Frost Hammer yes. clan. But they were just one clan. Yeah. yeah. And that was Lots under of the banner. Of so she called the banners. I'm sorry, I keep going to Soya. <sighs> hey. <laughs> Princess, you do, you, no, no, Barnabos, if that's what you're asking, Barnabos absolutely knows that uh, information, that kobolds were uh, were one of many clans that were all being called the banners uh, to, to, uh, uh, to her, to wherever she may have been, probably the capital city. Meaning it's not, ju- it's, she's not only served by kobolds. Yes, she has yeah. other fiefdoms yes. or people and that, that. And yeah, and it would have been, you would all have known that the kobolds had indicated that there was, there were, there were uh, a, like a dwarf like race okay. that they yep. talked about, okay. that there were, uh, t- I, was, I remember the, the dwarf the, race. The Minotaurs, I believe yeah. I, I mentioned. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> there, yeah, yeah. If, if that's what you're Dwarves. asking, you all have that information together. Okay. So there, okay. Does the snowflake remind me of the vision that I saw <gasps> of, of the snowflake and the perfect fractals with. Presumably, like mechanist fucking shit up and making everything perfect. And if if it does, it, you remember that perfect symmetry, and this being a corruption of primality, this is feels like a very primal, primal. ancient thing. In tune with the land and all that. Oh, well, it's probably the religious trinket of one of the other tribes that serve the princess. I do not believe it is magical, and perhaps it was made. No, Many I, moons ago. I check for magical properties. It ain't thrumming. It, ain't it thrumming. might. No, it ain't thrumming. It might serve us in bartering. Yeah, we should take it. It ain't in thrumming. In no, negotiation. So take it. Leave yeah, no, it. I think we should I like take it. the word ain't. What do we think? I will, I will use this word moving forward. <laughs> yeah, you like it? I'm yes. so glad I could help you with I something. I ain't kidding you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ship's leaving the harbor. I'll, Thirty seconds, boys. I'll stand up. I believe in case we encounter whichever presumably giant tribe made this, it might help our cause. You may place it somewhere on the ah oh. ship. Ah, oh, um, oh boy, I've never gotten to do this before. Uh, Barnabas, where do you think we should put this? <laughs> Are there any weird superstitions or anything I need to be aware about? I don't want like all of a sudden something something the uh, thousand witches. <laughs> Out of my butthole. <laughs> I'm sorry, you said what about your butthole? I don't want to summon a thousand witches out of my butthole because I put this this bone thing in the wrong place on the ship. Is that something that can happen? I... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you look really nervous. You swallow enough eggs. Oh, I don't swallow <laughs> eggs. I ain't no lizard. <laughs> While this could be bad luck, you, Mr. Stabiscotch, got yourself the hex charm. You got yourself the tattoo. That's right. And you still have the hex charm on you. You have your spoon? Uh, did, wasn't it like it's fashioned into an earring? It's yeah, earring. yeah. then it's still yeah. there. It's horribly affected by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like beet red and like, kind of like swollen and like drooping. <laughs> on and you are bus. immune, <laughs> Mr. Stabiscotch. <laughs> I've never had that in my whole life. <laughs> Why don't we fashion into a mast head? Can we not talk about infected pigs? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yes. Just kidding. I take it all back. Um, yeah. It's like following sepsis. following uh, Barnabas's instructions, I would help him or have him help me fashion it to. I should probably tighten it up. Yeah. There. You take a step onto the sled, and the first step, you use your right foot instead of your left foot, and from your butthole, you hear. <laughs> <laughs> A new spell. <laughs> okay, yeah. We're, we're playtesting that. Uh, Shin uh, witches! It's called crack. It's uh, called crack? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I feel uh, like. Can we talk about Creek in a minute? Yes. Okay. We're going to share Creek with everybody because what the and fuck? Crack uh, and sisters. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, oh, you right. fashion the fucking yeah, yeah, Once yeah, yeah. everybody's good to go. And everybody's seatbelt buckled up. Ah, <laughs> uh, Scrim would not use the seatbelt. Uh, he, he doesn't know how to use the the sat the fa- he doesn't care. He's, he wants to be like Barnabas, sort of caution the wind. Once everybody's ready, I would bump it up one notch and ease us out of the station. Okay. All as, we have, up. as we have pushed it towards the silver, 
yep. the city, what we believe to be civilization. Yeah, some kind. yeah, yeah. You watch that silvery glyph go over you, and you begin to make your way deeper and deeper. Uh, you go from two miles per hour to four miles oh, yep. per hour. Um, how fast do you take it? Um, I would slowly ramp up to thirty again, and when I feel that we've we've gone a, a significant distance at thirty, I bump it up to fifty, and I'd be listening for those bells. All right, you're you're manning the operation. You are uh, uh, listening. There's only the sound of rushing wind, the sound of the rails against the icy grooves, and the sound of your flapping uh, uh, fabric of the of the uh, sail and of the uh, the clothes around you, and of whatever you happen to be discussing. Fifteen minutes, thirty minutes go by. You are you ramped up to uh, uh, fifty miles per hour at this point, and uh, you are all <coughs> starting to settle into what probably feels like another hour, two hours. It makes wow. sense that these things might be at regular intervals, but if you're going fifty miles per hour, and miles per hour doesn't connect with you, but yeah. thinking about how fast you are going, it's like wow. We had to walk all those hundreds of miles, and have we gone a hundred miles already? It feels like that might be the case. And another another hour goes by, and we're at 150 miles. That that could be a third of our journey all the way to the crown already. That's unreal. That's uh, uh, days or perhaps weeks, depending on the weather, of agonizing trekking and slow walking in almost the blink of an eye. Something that you can do between rests. And as you are thinking of this, you all sort of settle some of you sitting on the back bench just making sure that you feel the the your stomach with your Taishan is right next to you Queenie Barnabas you are are walking up and down make checking the harnesses looking oh, at the sights I'm still Rose and Jack at the front of <laughs> the world well then you and Scrim who are keeping your eyes on the front would see the f- this first, which is um, illuminated for a moment, what looks like a small figure right in the center of the of the road, and it gets faster very, very quickly. It looks almost like a white ghost as you crash into whatever this this creature is. It is not a ghost. You do not pass through it ethereally. It is some sort of a white-skinned beast, and it slams into the pilot, into the cow catcher. You are unable to stop yourself because you are moving faster than you've ever moved in your fucking we were made for this. <laughs> I, regret, I regret not using my seatbelt. And you. This is a PSA, ladies. There's no way to crash. You, you do not crash. You yeah. just fucking slam into this thing, and Can all I of a sudden you, it just <laughs> disappears. <laughs> you do not hear it tumble underneath. Oh. It seems to be stuck in the grate. <gasps> Is there viscera? Is there, I mean, like, oh. fur? Like, like I, does you, anything you, come you, up you over You the... both immediately uh. would have to walk over and look down, and looking down, oh, you do. can <laughs> see right the there. back of a head. Scrim uh, would be like, ah! white, <laughs> white, white hair smooshed into the surface of this thing. Broken bones, crushed, disgusting oh, yeah. limbs. Scrim would be screaming. That's what's, uh, what's happening right now. I don't think I would. I I would be like still like holding the. Th- I, I would be. I would Queenie, be able, you're yeah. the only person who yeah, can lean over far Queenie. enough in your in your <laughs> Rose and Jack anything. posture. You both. You what always hear its thud. <laughs> it, it looks very dead. I'm assuming. It looks very dead, until. Oh. Uh, Is everything okay? We hit something! We hit something! <laughs> starts to inflate almost and piece itself back together. You can see crushed bits of skull pop back into its oh proper skull shape and start to pull like this. You can see broken collar bone and skin, uh, 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 be shoved bone shoved through skin, start to sink back in and immediately start to close. You can see all of these pieces start to come together. It's <laughs> happening slowly, but it is... Whatever this is, regenerate. Like, what was that? Uh, while are, is everyone else up front? Uh, I'm, 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 right I'm I running. Put yourself front. where you are. Uh, I am where I am. I'm, I'm still. I'm running. Thing. I'm I'm running up here. Miss Marsh, what was it? Scream! Humanoids were not meant to go this fast. <laughs> I stop <laughs> this. I'm just screaming. We hit something. We hit something, <laughs> and I'm not slowing down. Barnabas, like you're looking down, and you're seeing this same creature start to 
almost come back together. This is a massive creature. This is not a small human smashed against the windshield of a car. This is a fucking large, gangly, impossibly lean-muscled creature, uh, uh, bigger than you are. Uh, if I get the sense there's a monster and it's moving, mm -hmm. I say, like, oh no, you know, beastie! <laughs> I'm gonna take my anchor and slam it down into leverage and try to just like just peel it off and yeet it out of it. So we just it it'll smacks against the wall and like I'm gonna immediately go into a rage. I'm gonna get uh, get covered in barnacles <laughs> and coral and as I'm dripping with seawater. Uh, Given this strange space, no free rides. You swing down with your anchor. Yeah. Uh, uh, roll the hit, or perhaps some sort of dexterous uh, uh, maneuver. I mean, be, I know you have the crusher attack. feet, so I'm kind of thinking to roll yeah. the hit if you want to yeah. like get underneath it and try to like pull it off. Well, that'll still hit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we just need contact. Yeah, it's gonna. <laughs> It's going to be a twenty. Oh, sorry, actions. It is going to be a uh, twenty-six. A twenty-six with a twenty-six for for uh, uh, almost effortlessly. It takes all your muscles to pull it free, and you can hear it unstick from the surface of the, given the, the speed that it was collided with, you can hear it unstick from the pilot and you are able to whip it, but not fast enough to get it off and away from the ship, but instead underneath the rail. Going 50 miles per hour, this thing immediately Play-Dohs underneath, ah! just swish. And I'm, you imagine if you were fast enough to look behind you, there'd be a thick red streak in the groove of this uh, moving sled. <coughs> but you are still speeding along without, without having to uh, un, un, undone this speed. <laughs> what did we hit? Oh, <laughs> you know, it was coming to life. He didn't kill it. Oh, I turn around. <laughs> Is it clear we killed it? You turn and you look and you see what is effectively paste. You don't know if that. You don't know if it's dead or alive. You're, it's already starting to shrink so quickly. <laughs> we can't tell anyone about this. We can't. We have to take this to our graves. What is, was it? An animal? A beast uh -huh. of the caverns? Was it a, a, a dragon? What did it look like? <coughs> Dungeon Master, what did it look like? I just like? see paste! <laughs> <laughs> what did it look like? White matted fur. It's like a yeti. White skin. It was like an albino troll. <coughs> Would I recognize it as a troll? Mikey knew that it was that was troll. I, I they think used. that I have to I ask you what you sniped that off. Yeah, I, I knew you could I smell knew it. it. I, I knew fucking it. I fucking knew it. Do you think that Barnabas would have encountered a troll? Uh, he, I would have encountered Scrags, sea trolls. Oh, I yeah. think very. They'd be probably. I think it would be at this point, having been that close enough to attack something and pull it free, even in its disgusting state, that the nature of its limbs being what it is, and perhaps even you got a glimpse of its face in that moment, that you would have a sense that this looks like a creature, uh, like a sea troll that hasn't seen light for millennia. <gasps> so like an albino cave troll. Oh. Uh, Mr. Yornir, uh, I think it was a little... I, th I think it was some sort of troll. It looked <clears throat> like kin to the scrags that I've killed many a time. <laughs> some of them were trolls as well. Oh, 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 I mean, that sounds like it was a good thing we were going so well, fast. Have, have you heard of any underground trolls? I, I suppose that I have heard of, of trolls that live underground. Yes, uh, trolls it's, live in caves. Are they solitary and not in gigantic colonies? I look, I, I, look, I look like what a light blue. What do I know about <laughs> troll culture? Getting... That's a good question, and it's one you're starting to ask yourself as all of a sudden you feel this... <laughs> and you realize that there's texture under the right side of, uh, of the groove. There's clearly some of the caves actually uh, uh, collapsed at this point, and you are going 50 miles per hour very fast, <laughs> rapidly starting to shake as, as you, aren't, you aren't sure if there's more tunnel left. The entire right side of this tunnel is completely pitch Black. Whatever the illumination is, you're only getting left side information, and you could crash at any time. 
Stop this now! Why? I can't hear you! I, I literally <laughs> rip the rope off and I walk up there and I just crank it down. The rope is not six feet long. The rope is 30 feet long. You oh, can okay. walk yeah, up with, uh, with it wrapped around even three times around your waist. You're able to stand and and get immediately I to literally the, to the rip labor. scrim off of the handle. I'm still holding on to it. <laughs> I, as quickly as I can, every six seconds. Six seconds. And, uh, and, uh, I will also, as quickly as I possibly can, I will uh, pop on uh, my pipe and breathe in, and and I'm gonna cast gust of wind against the sail um, oh. to help slow down as quickly as possible. It uh, it's a line of strong wind, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide. Yeah. In the direction that I choose for one minute. So basically, I will be trying to while they're slowing it down. I'm gonna be trying to basically push it against. You lean back against the railing. And you look up, and you can see this billowing shape of the sail, and you push at it, and it starts to flatten and flap chaotically, uh, and that seems to do some work. It's a good thing that you were able to give yourself, uh, give the team a boost, because in this moment, you eventually come to a stop just as you anchor up against a large stone, something that almost surely, had you not slowed down, would have sent you into a barrel roll. And you find yourself complete, coming to a complete stop here in the middle of this tunnel. Ah, 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 fuck, ah, fuck, ah, ah, cat, ah, are we all right? Ah, 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 ah,
Yeah. And so oh, he, oh, yeah. he oh, fucking God. launches that thing. And you can see it sail down the, the that. It's not that there isn't uh, illumination, totally. It's not pitch black, right? Yeah. But it does provide an additional <sighs> illumination. And when it lands, it takes a moment for it to flicker out. And peering down, you do see a, a shape, a small shape, slumbering forward. And sure enough, You can hear it scraping on the ice, moving uh, forward, uh, moving uh, forward, uh, and it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? The slot didn't we're, kill. The ship didn't kill it. We're just assuming it's a bad thing. We don't know. Those ogres weren't mean. What if this is? What if this troll just happened to be checking for sounds, not expecting the. The, the ship to be running and we killed an innocent thing. We didn't kill it and it sounds hungry and kind of mad. Or it just sounds like it got hit by a freaking <laughs> ship. We need to turn the, the, the ship and around. And an anchor. Mr. Yorner, help me. And I'm you turn to the off. ship and it's not a matter of turning the ship around. It is almost at an angle because oh, it's, it, it's gotten so up fast. onto this ground. Okay, and not time. You, you need to get it up and off or, or, or over or find some way to get it um, onto the track. And this section of the cave is not wide enough to turn it all the way around. 180 degrees, no way. Do we feel like, oh. the, like the collapse right side is enough? Can we clear it? Is there any, or is it like so collapsed in that there's no fucking way? Share some solutions that you have to that problem. Um, oh god, what spells do I have? I don't have earth craft. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is the worst. What, I haven't even, well I guess I could have prepared my spells. That's, that would have been a good idea to do. Um, oh my god. I have stone shape. Oh, that's pretty fucking oh, good. What? Fuck. That's pretty fucking good. That is pretty good. Oh no, good. it's way less good than you would think. Okay. Right. <laughs> that is I can mediocre. only touch a stone object of medium size or smaller, or a section of stone no more than five feet in any dimension, and form it into any shape that suits your purpose. So, for example, you could shape a large rock into a weapon, idol, or coffer, or make a small passage through a wall. As long as the wall is no less than five feet what thick. What level is this? This is a fourth level spell. Oh! Uh, you um, look, looking at the, the terrain being what it is, um, this was the largest uh, uh, erosion spot. This, <clears throat> this section would be considered like a medium boulder, and it was not something that you collided with. The rest of the area largely is just erosion that has fallen onto the ice and into the groove. That's why you were able to go 50 miles per hour and just experiencing, just experience shaking. If had you collided with this, that's what would have sent you spinning. But if you had shaped this, you could probably start the, the sails up again and maybe start to go again as rough as the terrain is. Assuming you don't hit any more of those rocks, it might be well worth it to use the magic to get that blockage out of the way, given the impending troll. <laughs> I um, I see what Yornir is thinking of doing, and I take the, the wand from my honeypot, and I use web um, to coat, um, to make a layer of thick honey web um, between us and this troll thing. That's flammable! I know, if we need it. But it should Damn. hopefully prevent him from getting to us, and it lasts for an hour. Okay. So. Um... I'm you use my, one of my you literally just create to, like a honeycomb wand. honeycomb wand like shield like yeah. barrier uh, all around the perimeter of a wall of mm. this. Okay, okay. Mr. Fire Blossom, get ready. If it's, I see you start closer, to cast spells and walk away now. from the helm, yeah. I would immediately basically sheath uh, <coughs> the brutal blade and get back in position and like wait for like the go-ahead from the team to like kick it back into gear as I'm watching you intently do what you do. Get ready to go! Uh, I'm gonna walk up, and I'm gonna use it twice. I'm just gonna blow two fourth level spells Damn. on 10 by 10 cubic rock. Okay. And basically my goal is to, I have to touch it, um, and I am going to, if there's like, I see ho like holes that lead into tunnels, I wanna basically f f form the rock off of the track and like try to cover up 
any of the, or as many of the holes as I can in the ten feet that I'm shaping. Okay. Um, it's the it's the walls of this tunnel uh, going left and right quite a way. So you can certainly seal up this particular area, but that doesn't account for yeah. everything to the left and to the right. Of course. That being said, you are able to um, <coughs> shape the stone, uh, the blockage, the, the, the actual I- I issue that would have crashed the, the sledge and smooth it down, even being able to uh, finesse it to create almost like a groove of yeah, stone. Yeah, I want to totally instead reshape of, it. Instead into... of, yeah, you, you reshape it perfectly, uh, uh, creating a, a, a New York subway system style, <laughs> uh, uh, even with a little subway tiles. You know how, how classy those are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You do that. And um, it's at this moment that the troll arrives at the web wall the honeycomb wall, and it stops. Can and looking, we see it through the honeycomb? Looking through the honeycomb, you can finally oh. get a sense of this large, primal creature. It is, it is looking around, and you can hear it muttering under its own breath, and then it's catching eyes with each of you. Ah. It is obviously furious for the pain that it just experienced. It is very evident to those of you who are close enough to it uh, that it this is the same creature. Um, once I, it's cleared enough, I'll get back on the ship and I'll go to the back as Scrim starts to... Oh, as soon as you would tell me to, yeah. like, go, 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 I would do two, four, eight. And I, just to get us going to try to put some distance, but I don't want to go fast, like super fast, until I know that we're back in, like, a clear track. So if it's going to be bumpy, I, I want to go, I want to put distance between us. And if this thing suddenly starts like gaining on us crazy, then I would go up higher. When you push it to two, it starts tearing at this web. <gasps> it starts. It sees what you are doing, and it is starting to try and and, and it's sticking and, uh, and endeavoring to get through this thick honey. But it is ha- struggling. You do not move forward. The sail unfurls, but there's still too much friction for you to go two miles per hour. You are you are still stuck. You get it up to four, and you scoot for a moment, and then come to a stop. And this then you get it up to you get it up life. to eight, <laughs> and then you start to get, continue to push it. You are hearing the screaming, and it's in this moment that part of the wall that you tried to protect pushes away, and you see more trolls start to push in and down into the tunnel. I will cast. No, I can't because it's concentration. I'd let the other one go for more web. I need everyone to roll for initiative. Oh! I'm gonna pump up the jams. Uh, you make it to the eight miles per hour. Um, uh, sorry, the 15 mile per hour uh, uh, mode, and you start to pull away. But it is in this moment that two trolls, uh, these ice trolls, immediately lurch down, and they look at the uh, uh, struggling uh, ally of theirs uh, down down one way, and they look up and they see the oh, effigy that you have uh, fixed to the front of this uh, sled. They are immediately enraged when they see this thing. You can hear them well, screaming and murmuring. You're near. You speak giant. I do. Yeah. And you, the, as crude as it is, you can get the sense of defilers. You can get the sense of uh, uh, infiltrators. You can get the sense of they are coming into our home and they are doing this. Uh, they seem to be ha- have hurt, hurt our friend. They are immediately agreeing that you must be destroyed. That you see the anger well up in them, in their posture, in their eyes, in their face, and in their words. Twenty to thirty. Oh shit! I don't uh, have fucking twenty-two for Tai Shen, twenty-one for Yornir. Wow! Wow! They both roll eighteen thanks to Queenie. Holy moly! Hold on. I they have am so trouble. sorry. I'm so un- underprepared for this. Uh, where is the um? I need one of these. Okay, you said for Tai Shen. Uh, 22 for Taishan. Yep. 21 for Yornir. Fifteen to uh twenty. Seventeen. Seventeen for Scrim. 
Sorry, gosh, I'm usually not this uh, unprepared. I just That's forgot okay. to create placard cards. You're good, you're no good, worries. you're good. Uh, 10 to 15? 13. 13 for Barnabas. Yep. I did not roll very well, even though. And Queenie? Um, I got a 13. 13? This is my favorite. My favorite one is number one. And let's quickly roll for monsters. Wow, that's unfortunate. <laughs> You're really good, Derek. <laughs> I they're felt very, really good about making them. They're very fun. They're very charming. Okay. Okay. Hi, uh, Shad. <laughs> That's your name. Thank you. Jornire. Tyshen, you're up. Uh, oh no, you're near. Fu Zhao will see us through, <laughs> and his hands will light up in <coughs> golden flame, and he will touch his own chest, and he'll touch Yornia's chest. Oh. And both of their chests will glow as they breathe oh, in and nice. out. That's a great use. And he will twin spell Dragon's Breath at a fourth level. Yeah, that's oh! disgusting. And uh, he says, uh, I will burn the one in the back. And he jumps off. Shucks, one, two, howdy. Three, four, five, I've six. got a fire in my belly and I'm all fired up. <laughs> exactly Golly right. gee willikers. <laughs> I love fire. Uh, and then a 15 foot cone. One, two, three. So basically all of this, he will open his mouth and as a bonus action, or as an action, <laughs> bonus action to cast a spell, and then his action yep. is to breathe. As he breathes onto the web and to the troll. Um, <clears throat> and I think it needs to be a deck save. But I know that there's additional effects when you burn someone in web. Yeah, so it, it's a matter of whether it's already stuck to the web or not. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it would have been clawing at the web. What would it have had to roll? It would have had to have rolled a dexterity saving throw for every turn that it was clawing at the web. <laughs> That's a lot of turns. Uh, it is It is entangled. Um, so it is going to take a 2d4 fire damage for every five foot of web that it is touching, which because it's large, that's two. two. So it'll take 44 fire damage. In addition to whatever. In addition fuck you're doing. to. Fuck, man. Well. And it's a disadvantage. The on webs the are flammable. Throw. Let's just read this together yeah, to make yeah, I'll sure that's right. Read it. Any five foot cube of webs exposed to fire burns away in one round, dealing 2d4 fire damage to any creature that starts its turn in the fire. So okay, so when he starts his turn, yep, he should take, he'll 40, take 4d4 fire damage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, but right now, <laughs> it needs to make a dex save. Uh, disadvantage because it's restrained. Yeah. There you go. Disadvantage because it's, it's restrained. DC 16. Oh, uh, I got a 3 and a 1. Okay. So it takes 5d6 yeah, that's oh! fire damage. That's freaking huge. 1, 2, 3. Would you enjoy some calming, Four. burning alive? <laughs> <laughs> a calming cup of being burned alive. Five, six, seven, eight, uh, 14, 15, 16. Jeez, that's bad. 16 points of fire damage. 16, thank you. But now he's no longer restrained. Uh, at the end of the round, it'll they burn, burn away. Yeah, they burn no. away in one round. Yeah. It, it, it burns up. Uh... Is that Tai Chen's turn? That's Tai Chen's turn. And, and he doesn't have any more movement? That's where he, he where uses he all his movement, action, and bonus action. Okay, you're near, you're up. Oh god, uh, what do I have That's to do? That's terrible, I'm Shucks, sorry. Shucks, how do I have a fire, fire in my I belly? I should not have rolled next to Yeah, I'm just gonna walk up and breathe fire, I think. And yeah. I am all fired up. One, two, three and a half, five. Uh, I mean, you've got a 15 foot code. Yeah, I'm gonna move here. <coughs> and just breathe down. Use my action to breathe down onto this troll. Uh, can I stand here or no? Oh, I'll stand there. That's yeah, fine. the only square that's illegal to stand is the on the dragon. Is the right. actual on the dragon? Yeah. Okay. You could stand here. You could stand on any of these court side uh, pieces with the railing being where it is. It's all legal except for that. Okay, so I'm going to breathe down, and he's gonna make a deck save. Let me pick some better dice here. 
Uh, regular style? Regular, yep, regular style. Uh, regular style. 11. That fails. One, two, three, four. They are not five. very dexterous, you feel. That's better. Nice. 12. Uh, Twenty-two points of damage to number three. Twenty-two oh. points of damage to number three. Sorry, and one should take five more points of damage because Taishan has elemental affinity for oh. fire. So any fire damage he adds his. I his love Sorry, that Doug. Feature. I'm still. I'm, I'm still. I'll, I'll, I'll get faster. Works but. great, weapon master. Oh, oh great. god, action! Action! Okay, and, and then that's how much damage they got. And I'm also going to put a little Bernie here, and I'm going to put a little Bernie here. just to make sure I track that. Um, uh, and then just my bonus action, I'm going to hold my staff and you'll see the head of it. Like ice starts to grow around the kind of um, gnarled branches of my of my uh, walking stick. And I'm just casting Shillelagh in case I want to give it a whack okay. at any point. Okay. Uh, so it's the monster's turn. Uh, troll number one will immediately take 12 points of fire damage <laughs> as the webs burn away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's still restrained, though. Yeah, it really? is. Yeah, because it, round. Because it, it burns away in one round. Oh! And so, at the start of, or by, yeah. the start, I believe the start of Taishan's yeah. turn is when it burns away. So what can it do? So it's still restrained. It's just burning. Oh, uh, whatever you can it do can to break out of restraint. It can use action. Oh, yeah, it can use make. its action to make a strength saving throw to uh, get out. Uh, does a 12 get out? No. Okay, it continues to be on fire, screaming, oh, screaming, screaming, um, and it is, uh, you're, near, you're still hearing all of this jabber. Uh, you all hear just uh, screams and grunts and uh, breathy uh, uh, words coming out, but you're near. Uh, just, and real quick, if I could, as a free action or whatever, I just want to shout out. Uh, if you understand me, let us pass or die. Mm. Um, defilers of the Cold Maiden, they're screaming as they are continuing to, sh uh, oh, to chase like after her. you more and more. Yeah, uh, but it is not able to break free. The other two, however, uh, are going to advance onto the ship. Uh, one towards uh, uh, Barnabas and Queenie, and the other towards Yornir. They crawl up and onto the ship, and... Uh, uh -oh. They are there now. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> um, and uh, two attacks on Barnabas. That's going to be a 26 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. And another one on you. That's going to be another 26. Wow, I rolled really great for those. And then a bite attack on Queenie. That's going to be a 15 to hit. That misses. That misses. Okay, so it's just going to be two of these guys. Do you have leather armor? I'm also not raging. I mean, my AC is 17. Did I say I was raging? No. Uh, you're going to you take 13 slashing damage. Uh huh. 13 slashing yeah, damage uh, plus 10 cold damage. Oh no, you're not raging because it's been longer it's been than a minute. minute. So, uh, so five cold damage. Yep. And then uh, 13 slashing. Uh, you take some of the cold damage, so I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Well, that's cut. The same roll, literally exact same roll. Um, so what's the, what's the total? I'm uh, finding real quick. Yep. Oh, I don't have any of these spell slots left. Constitution saving throw, uh, that'll be a 13. 13, you feel uh, the, uh, the coldest you've ever felt. This creature is made of ice. It is literally something that uh, survives underneath the mountains of Drakkar, and uh, you will have disadvantage on your attack rolls until the end of your next turn. Oofta. Uh, that's the conclusion of their turns as they scream and, and tear in. Scrim, you're up. Would I be able to perceive in any way, if this is unreasonable, tell me, that the fire is doing anything to these creatures? Would I be able to make a connection that, that that this fire is doing anything extra, or would I not even realize that? You know, and it's okay to say that that it's not something that Scrum would even understand. Or would I would say that you have a chance of making that connection roll in nature or <coughs> Arcana check oh. or medicine. Uh, all of those are probably egregiously bad. Nature, 
Uh, medicine is plus two. Arcana is one. Yeah, I would make a. I'll make a medicine check. Uh, no. Okay. No. Nope. Uh, would that have consumed a bonus action? Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, then in that case, I will just use my um, Hexblade's Curse on number three right there. Uh, and then I will uh, move up uh, within range to swing the Brutal Blade at it. Uh, plus three bonus to damage rolls. Eh. Ooh, mm. 17. That's not bad. Uh, yeah. Plus a bunch to hit. Yeah. Uh, plus eight would be 25 to hit. That hits. Um, okay. Then I am going to also use Fury of the Small, uh, which is because it's so much small. bigger than me, so that's going to add total, uh, it's going to add eight damage to it. Uh, so I'm just going to roll my normal damage. Oh, no. That's oh. going to be one, two, three. Oh. I rolled maximum damage. Let's go. Oh. That's actually insane. Uh, so Let's that's going to be 12, go. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Uh, with all of the bonuses and all of that together, 28 total points of damage with the blue Shoot number three? Yeah, I try, I cut into this thing deeply. I'm following up behind Yornir after I see him he, unleash this unbelievable amount of flame. I cut deep into this troll's he, uh, shoulder. He, yoga fire, and then all of a sudden <laughs> you are in there digging into his skin, and um, I would say that having done so much damage that you do notice that your your cuts are not uh, uh, being healed, the wounds that you're applying, uh, something about the nature of the fire seems to make a connection in that moment. Okay, that's my turn. Uh, Barnabas. Uh, I am going to get coated in seawater and barnacles and the like as a, uh, a large uh, writhing spiked octopus tentacle will emerge from my back. Um, and I will turn to this one since taken, uh, since we're all ganging up on this one and says like, gosh, you're even uglier than the other one. And I'm going to <laughs> swing in, uh, using reckless attack to make it, it straight. And, uh, I am going to still, you know what? I'm going to use great weapon master. I don't care. That was a good idea. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh, let's go. So, I need to roll uh, a lot of d6s. Yeah, I fucking bet. Uh, one, two. So the first hit is 2d6, right? Uh, and then the next hit is uh, 4d6. Like all my d6s roll like trash, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know if I've ever rolled max damage on a hit like that before. With multiple That's dice outrageous. Like that. That's, That's insane. That's I, I had to reward you. I wasn't going to give you the 15, fire knowledge, yeah. and I was like, you know what? Max damage? 15. When does that fucking Thank happen? You. Thank you. you roll, it's like rolling a 100 on a uh, D hundo. 17. <laughs> uh, plus. What's 17 times 3? Uh, 24. 21, 40, 61. Yeah. 60, 30, 51. 51? 51 points of bludgeoning, of bludgeoning damage. You smash into this creature and you feel that you have killed it. It oh. dies. Okay. It, it, there's no other way to say this. <laughs> it, it, you, you crunch ah! it. You hit it in, the, in, in, in its head and spike it down. Um, and when it lands, there's a, a brief moment of silence where you smash into it and it starts to fall backwards and you're all waiting for that starting to regenerate, but because of the fire damage that Yornir was able to apply to it in this moment, it does not regenerate. Instead, oh, it falls shit. down to the side. You attack number three? Yeah. Oh, he's... Oh. he's Do you think I haven't felt cold before? <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Queenie. Um, Queenie is going to turn towards number one. Um, and oh, yeah. cast her oh. hunter's mark on it because it should be 60 feet away yeah. based on the web. Because uh, I would have had. This is 60 feet. Okay, so I would have had to have been 60 feet. From I assumed that, that you spot. were closer and that you actually yeah. backed up, but let's put you at the 60 yeah. feet mark. Because I haven't moved. So uh, I and be you can even be a little from... closer at that point. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. And so, so the like troll will be like right here. Yeah. To hit both of us. To have hit both of us. Yeah, that's right. Well, it didn't hit Queenie, so. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's, that's right. right. Let's, let's keep it where we're yep. um, Game state. And so I will use my bonus action to Queenie Hunter's Market with my 
um, honey pot. Shit. Um, and then I am going to. Oh, actually, you can be here. Um, and then I'm going to use my Fey bolts as my action. Um, and I got, I rolled two. So I have two Fey bolts to use. Fey bolts. Yeah, and so I get to attack with that. I'm um, sorry. It's been a while. Crits don't re add modifiers, right? I get it's just two nice. of these now. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Just want to make sure. So, so that 17 times 3 was correct. 19 to hit. Keep me honest. Two 19s to hit. That both hit. That both hit. That yeah. both, both hit. That both hit. That both hit. Pit that dog. <laughs> and pet that dog. Pet that dog. <laughs> pet that dog. Um. Uh, I want to bet that dog. Mm. I like playing barbarians. Oh. Very simple, but it's fun. I want to. Me so too. Much. No, it's just, I as Labouche, you yeah. just like, you know what? I, I do one thing well, and I'm gonna yeah. do it really <laughs> well. I'm gonna beat the shit out okay, of this guy. Um, it's very fun. Oh, I need to. Uh, so it does. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fifteen points of damage. To number uh, one. Yeah. Um, and then my bees, because bees. I hit, are going to move. Um, are going to bees. attempt to move the troll. Uh, it needs to make a strength saving throw, or it's going to be moved 15 feet along the web to unburned area and hopefully get it stuck there. 22. Okay, it does not move. It just stays where it's at. Oh, I fucking bees! <laughs> uh, uh. And that's my turn. It's a sled's turn. Mm. You were at 15 miles per hour. It oh, was 2-4, two, 2-4, four, no. two, four, and then whatever the third one was. I didn't know if it was yeah, either 15. Yeah, 2-4, uh, 15. Yeah. Um, because you're still grinding along, you're gonna go half that speed. So I will say that you're going, uh... Oh, oh fuck. Ten squares. I need a mine. Now, slight you don't move. They oh. move. Oh, and Tysha. no. So you're all going to go... Hold on. Fuck! You're all gonna all everything that's not on the sled is going to start to move because Ten of the feet. amount of speed because of how fucking fast actually that is, and so this is gonna go uh, ten squares five ten um, two three four five six seven eight nine ten as suddenly this acceleration happens, but Tai Shen was still wearing his sled belt. Oh, that's and right. He You're fucking right. Goes prone and lands and begins getting dragged Drag. behind. Oh. Taking damage. And because I'm an insane person, oh, oh, I created oh. dragging behind a vehicle rules just for this encounter. No oh way! My God. <laughs> you guys missed this, but yeah. Oh. So we're leaving it behind. So now the web is wow. back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you, if you have a white bee, then you can uh, get rid of the, uh, the web. But um, Yeah, if we got it, we got it. If not, no big deal. Yeah, that works. As things start, uh, things start to move very quickly. All of a sudden, that friction that you've been experiencing unlocks, and the sled pulls forward, and you all watch the cavern walls start to fly past you faster, 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 faster. Top of the round, Tai Shen is up. He has to start his turn, and going at the speed that he's going, he's going to take one d six bludgeoning damage. Oh, well, that's fair. Uh, that's but he has to make a dexterity saving throw to see if he can kind of ski it. This feels oh. like my fault, but I don't want to take the blame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hang in there, buddy! <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Uh, he Ugh. is Sorry, able 12. to... Twelve. 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 Uh, I don't have a DC, and that's that's the problem with the system. So I'm going to say that the DC's ten, and that he succeeds. He takes half of three, so he's going to take one bludgeoning damage as he is initially tugged and pulled to the ground, but he's already holding onto the rope and beginning to get dragged along behind this. <coughs> For your information, since you're piloting Tai Shen, the, oh, make a the 30 feet that he is rolling, uh, that he's being dragged, to pull himself up the rope if he wanted to would just be considered difficult terrain. Oh, not bad. Can he fire off a spell before he does that? Or yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's just part of your movement. If you want to not move and pull your way up, you can use your action bonus action and just continue to be dragging. You're like trying to stay on your feet. It's very uh, uncharted That's very form. Fun. This is 120 feet. One, two, oh yeah, 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 not even close. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, you're not. Okay, so he can honestly get back here. 
He's gonna go. Yeah, oh, usually, oh, oh, but it's a difficult hands. terrain, and he had Three. to use, he had to get up. So he well, oh, he's still he's he still dragged, dragged, right? So yeah. oh, he's gonna stay prone. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's fine. So I am going. He's going to. Oh, uh, action! My teapot. What sun scorch? Hold on. <laughs> the teapot just disappears yeah. into the oh, into the no. shadows. That would be so. My desperate. arcane focus. Ah. He's going to raise his hand up and say, "Oh, fucking die!" <laughs> and he's going to shoot at a fourth level. He's going oh, to catch shit. scorching ray. Fuck oh, yeah! Let's which go. Which is normally second level, which is three rays, but this will be five rays. Five rays. Yeah. So that's five attacks. Suddenly, Sugar Ray starts playing. Ah, just for one line. Dim, 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 dim. Arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. I just want you to fucking die. To fucking die. The one's a natural one. Oh, twist. Yeah, twist it. Twist it. This is this is this is life or death. Much better. Okay. They probably all hit the lowest is Our mom loved sugar, right? Uh, it's been a round, and my rule is always one round before I give I reveal the AC, it's sixteen. Okay. For the ice So they all hit. Uh so that's Bunga Bunga out! This guy's smoked. That's five hits. Yeah, he's tested. Oh no. And if he chases after us, the honey is still there. No, it bur the, the whole thing burns away, right? Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It, it burned away. So not those squares burn away, the whole thing burns away. Keep it. I'll it take counts. it. I'll I take see, it. I see, I see, I see. Five, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, uh, 17, 20, 26, uh, 28, 28 30, 34, 37 plus 25. 37, you watch these scorching 60, rays no, it's sail like, down it's like 62. <laughs> like streamers, and you see the, <laughs> you see you see the creature ignite into flames. The web is still just starting to come down like molten uh, uh, candy. And it uh, uh, covers him. Uh, he watch as he struggles down to the ground and starts to disappear into a pin uh, point. You have the sense that he ain't getting back up. Love that. Oh, fuck! And that's his turn. That's amazing. What a fun, fun turn. Now it's your New Year's turn. Oh, fuck! You, you gotta go two in a row, baby. Uh, I'm gonna walk up here. I'm going to you know, you know what we're gonna do? You know what we're gonna do? What? Not this round, but next round we're gonna make it a little easier on you. I'm just gonna have a really easy turn. I'm gonna breathe fire because he's still concentrating on it. And I don't think yeah. Scorching Rain is concentration. No, no, it's it is not. not. It is not. So I'm going Jeez. to breathe fire on, uh, on that fella there. Oh. Throw. How about this? I'm gonna use meta magic to make that spell that I just cast a bonus action, so he can dash and get the rest. Oh, of the that's what I'm gonna do. Nice. Pulling I love sorcerers. I love lost flexibility. Yeah. yeah, shockingly. Uh, yeah. So dex once, save, once you can Rubik's cube their brains. Yeah. Dex save on the uh, on troll two. Fifteen points of damage, Damn. or half if they succeed. Fifteen. Oh, he succeeds. If he succeeds, he needs to make a dex save. Dex save. Uh, dex save. He did not succeed. So fifteen uh, points of fire so damage. So that's going to be fifteen. Uh, and then bonus action. He's going to. But that was fire damage, correct? That was fire damage. Okay. Uh, I think he's going to hold off on spending another spell slot. Unless, are you looking really wounded? Is anyone looking really wounded? No, no, no. no I'm good. I got, I got chunked, but not I have that sixty-nine chunked. health. Nice, nice. 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 Uh, nice. He's gonna bonus action uh, healing word, uh, Barbos. Oh! Just a little Whoa, something. Thank you, Mr. Yornir! Just a little something, something. Five. I'm sorry we're smashing your kin to death, although it's said that uh, my father and ancestor had laid with a sea giant, so perhaps <laughs> I've got a bit of giant blood myself. It's amazing. I gave them fair warning six seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Monsters are up. Uh, it uh -oh. is going to oh, that's right. uh, you swap the fuck. Use. Uh -oh. I thought for sure it was my turn. <laughs> well, how much healing? I'm sorry. A five. Oh, it was bad. No bad. No bad at all. All right. It's going to use its first two actions to try to claw at you. First one is a natural one. Second one is uh, 30, 20, uh, 24. Advantage though, right? Oh! Reckless? So the first one's going to be the 24. I did reckless, yeah. The second attack is going to be 
a four. 20. So both of those hit. 24 to hit. Is, yeah, that's going to hit. I'm going to use my reaction on the second one. Okay. Ooh. Uh, as my uh, tentacle, there's just a cracking tentacle from uh, Sea of Thieves, <laughs> will whip forward and attempt to parry the blow. Oh, Deflected. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I'm this going, feature. It's an amazing feature. This is the best feature. fucking feature. You guys play the same subclass, even, right? We do. Um, oh, that's fun. Minus six. Or my AC, oh no, my AC is increased by six. So my AC is now 23. 23. Nice. Nice. Okay. So you'll only take one of those hits. Yep. Well done. Then, so my tentacle parries. After you take uh, 12 points of slashing damage okay. and five points of cold damage, let me know. So now all of that is half. 12 plus five is, uh, so five is, is will be, that's two. And then uh, 12 points is six. six. So you would take eight, yep, points flat, eight points flat, and then it's going to use it, replace its next action to attempt to shove you five feet. Oh, okay. oh no! <laughs> you need to make an acrobatics or athletics check. That's correct. Athletics. You're advantaged because you're raging. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm playing barbarian. <laughs> I'm just trying it out. <laughs> Imagine not knowing how to play something as simple as a barbarian. <laughs> Mace! Mace isn't here, so <laughs> Mace isn't here, so I can make fun of him. Oh, uh, it's all in good fun. Athletics, you say? Put some uh, emotes in chat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just do one twist just to be yeah. safe, because we have them. This guy's dead. He exploded in the fire. Oh, yeah, he's... that guy's... 20. Charcoal. 20. I rolled a 1. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but twist. you get the intimidation of effect. Uh, it slashes at you, and you feel that cold. Um, I need to make a DC, uh, a, a constitution saving throw to see if you have disadvantage on your attack uh, for the next round. But uh, it intimidatingly uh, pushes into you, and you get the sense that, uh, suicidingly, it is attempting to push and pull you off the <gasps> sled. 18. You're, you're fine. You do not have disadvantage on the, your, your attacks for the next round. Uh, that is a conclusion of the monster's turn. Your honor, you just went. Yep. Scrim, you're up. Scream. I, uh, after watching, Scrim, uh, after watching Barnabas absolutely cave the skull of this troll and that was on fire, I will have dr withdrawn, pulled the brutal blade from, you know, wherever I had sunk it in deep. And now I see this other troll, uh, attempting to, like, wrestle. Barnabas off the sled. I, I grip the brutal blade with both hands, white knuckled, uh, and and I, I I think to myself, the fire, it's the fire, and uh, with my thirty five feet of movement, uh, I I let out a bellow, uh, a, 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 a high shrilled um, uh, goblin bellow. What does it as, sound like? Ah! <laughs> as I uh, run across the sled, and as I'm running. Uh, uh, white knuckled my with with the blade, uh, gray flames erupt what? around the blade as as, as anybody who is listening to this would hear a low growl of, of something canine esque. Uh, as uh, I cast green flame blade, but it's actually going to be gray, gray flame, flame blade. blade. That's uh, bad. I can't believe you're using this. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm shocked. And I'm going to uh, to strike um, at this troll. It's uh, been 86 years. And just to, just to clarify, green flame there's blade. no way for me to move my hexblade's curse. I like looked them up. Right, it's gone. No, like no, I it's said, gone. Fortunately, yeah. oh. right? okay. that's what I thought. I had no idea. Ooh, I like to twist, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Uh, 18 to hit. Yep. yep. 19 to hit. Yep. So that 18, means 16. I get 3d4 and a uh, d8 of fire damage. And that is really fire cool. Damage. I have no idea. great because fire damage will be important mechanically oh, in this fight. Not bad. Or uh, acid. Uh, 9, I mean, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 total points of damage. Only three are fire. Uh, but I am I am hoping to... To uh, number two? Uh, to number two, I, I jam the brutal blade uh, into up under its ribs the best that I can, uh, hoping to uh, have this thing let go of Barnabas and not take him, you know, over the edge with with him. You endeavor to distract it with pain, and, uh, and that'll be my whole turn. That'll be your whole turn, Barnabas. You're up. Uh, you see, Scrim make all of this. Uh, How screaming. nicely done, Mr. Stabiscotch. I'm gonna look back. And see the fucking like burning troll as he's dying, <laughs> and I'll say, 
Well, it's either one or both of us. I dare do you trust your own footing? And I am going to just swing my uh, anchor down, and I'm not disadvantaged. Uh, so while he's making his turn, uh, Scrim, what did we decide your uh, the speed we were at? What what what? Yeah. Whatever the third notch is. I, I know it was two four, and then I think you said we're fifteen. At, we're at fifteen right 15 now. Miles Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'm going to remember that. Uh, both of those. The AC sixteen. Yes. Yep. Both of those should hit. Great. Um, the lowest was seventeen. Thank God. Um, they all hit. And so then that is just to uh, 46. Not great. Uh, 10 plus uh, 14 plus uh, 48 points of bludgeoning. Damage. 48 bludgeoning damage to number two? To number two. To number two. You 48? 48. Holy Straight shit! Great open master! You punch in and uh, you master. punch ah. in and. Um, what does it look like as you kill and, fl- and fell this uh, troll? I think. I would like to just smash it and like so it's like really weak and as soon as I have an opening, I would like to basically return the favor and uh, then take my anchor and just swing it around and just shove uh, the troll off the side. Okay. What's your footing? <laughs> and hopefully it's pr- a split with, tr- uh, uh, with troll blood. This and this. Uh, immediately fall off the sled and are uh, careening down the tunnel as you are speeding away towards them. Um, Queenie, you're up. There's nothing left though, right? What are you doing? Um, I am unaware of whether there's anything else that's going to happen, so I am going to give the help action to Barnabas. Okay. So he'd get advantage if there's anything else to attack. That's fine. Oh, thank you, Miss March. <laughs> The sled moves forward, and it's just because I decided that, you know what? If you want your turn to mean something, I think that what we could do is we could have the sled go first, because you're about to collide in additional trolls. We can mix it up. You're the fucking dungeon master. There's no yeah. other way to say this. I don't know how to say this. I'm about to say You're that. about to bring you into more trolls. <laughs> I drew a lot more fucking trolls. Oh. I yeah, cannot like, believe how well done these are. It's so sad. I'm so much of a troll stan. Oh. I know every single reference. This that one you has used. a penis for a nose. I know every single reference wow. that you use <laughs> for these guys. So, I recognize all of them. Here's what we're gonna do. Is that actually where they're gonna be? That is where they're gonna collide into oh, the fucking pilot. Fuck! Oh, there are God. more on the sides that don't manage to scrape their way oh onto, the, onto the thing. Which is to say, get rid of the other uh, uh, t- uh, troll tokens because you are now speeding along. Uh, oh, we gotta speed up. So, very quickly, I had to do a little bit of research about like, what is miles per hour? And I found a really good, helpful thumb. Uh, 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 trick of rule thumb. of rule thumb. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Um, rule of cool. A rule of cool thumb thumb cool. I love cool thumbs. Which is to say <laughs> that whenever you want to ask yourself what you're moving in miles per hour in a given round, you just divide by 10. Oh. So if you move 30 feet per round, you are going three miles per hour. If you dash and go 60, you are going six, six miles, miles per hour. hour. Unfortunately, when you're simulating things like 20 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour, that's like 30 fucking squares. And we don't have enough fucking battle map to do that, which is why everything is what it is, right? Yeah. But when this is stationary, all of a sudden, all these fucking minis that aren't on the sled are racking rocketing. So all of that goes 30 squares. Uh, uh, back at the speed that we're technically going at, which is 15 miles per hour, and uh, that's, that's 150 squares. feet per round is how is how fast we're currently moving. And if you were to go to 60, uh, 30 miles per hour, you'd be going 300 feet per round. If you were going to go 50 miles per hour, you'd be going 500. It gets fucking crazy how many squares these. 100 squares would be how uh, would be 50 miles per hour on a battle map of this Jeez. size. So I just want to give it some scale per here. round. Right. As these, as these ogres are flying past, how Trolls. fast they are moving in comparison <laughs> relative to you. Uh, uh, so that being said, these three collide. They are hurt by their injury, but they are stuck against the pilot because you are now racing through this culture of these insane ice trolls, and now you may take your full turn because all of a sudden they are healing and starting to crawl oh, up God. the front of this uh, insane ice sled. 
Um, I'm going to look at them attaching themselves to the front of the ice sled, reach back into my honey pot and fling more webs at them. It's a 20 by 20 foot cube, so it should be able to it get all three all of them. them. And yeah. I'm going to turn to Taishan and go, light them up, buddy. <laughs> awesome. And that will be my turn. That is what you oh, do. Oh, yes. Of course I can. Dexterity saving throw. I would be honored. The top of the round, Taishan, what are you I'd doing? I'd love to burn them alive. <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, they need to make, dandy they need to make dexterity <laughs> saving throws to see um, if they are restrained or not. And I need to make sure that I have four, five, and six right here. And they have uh, this Oops. much health points. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to roll for each of them. Four fails. Uh, does 13 succeed? No. Nope. Uh, does 16 succeed? Yeah, that hits. Okay, that so uh, that only six survives. Uh, four and five are entangled by the honey. Mm-hmm, they're okay. restrained. Um, but he's still standing in web. Yeah, he's still in web. Let me, let me read it, just to make sure. Because um, it's when he starts his turn in web. Yeah. And if the web's on fire. Yeah. Oh, perfect! <laughs> I'm gonna it's cast. Just, it's just not restrained, so just do it doesn't have to make a up. save to walk out of it. I'm just gonna cast. Uh, I don't want to read the any of these spells, so I'm gonna cast Scorching Ray at third level. What about uh, Fireball? He doesn't have Fireball. What? what? I don't know what Mace is thinking here. Anyway, mm-hmm. well, because it, only recently did you get your fo- oh, guano. focuses. Oh, the He didn't. Ha- he didn't uh, have the sulfur. The, it's sulfur for it. Yeah. Or is it guano, guano and guano. sulfur? It's back yeah. guano. I thought it was sulfur. Oh. Maybe it's both. No, it's back it's just old back. Oh. I put sulfur, the, tr- the kobolds had sulfur for a reason. Well, you well, can say whatever you want, it's your world. Oh. We're just living in it. Oh, these are bad. Can it's I twist two of these? tiny yeah. ball of bat guano and sulfur. Oh, oh. okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> That's That's what I thought. Enough of you. Enough out of you. Okay, two hit uh, at the ones that are restrained. Um, are they advantaged? Oh, they anyway. are advantaged anyway. So then, so take the two twists back. Take the two twists back. Yeah, because you just right. use one twist. The other two will hit, right? These hit, and I'm gonna just use one twist on this yeah, one. Yeah, one, yeah, you're good. And Bingo. this one, let's see if it crits. Because this one I did not okay. It does not. So they all hit. Uh, we'll just do one on each, because that's what Tai Shen would do. Yeah. Yep. I didn't think to take Fireball. What is this meat magic you speak of? <laughs> Oh, meta magic. What is this what meta magic? You just magic you speak Oh, no, no. I, I get a fourth one. Because I, cast, I upcast it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's it another is. hit. Okay, so one. Two, six, two, six, two, six, two, six. two, two. It's basically fireball. Yeah. So we'll do two on number six. These trolls never stood a chance. Six, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 20 points of damage to number six. Mm hmm. Fire damage. Yep. Uh, Twelve points of damage to number four. I love the meat magic. <laughs> I love oh, max dig- damage. I love the meat magic. Uh, and then seventeen points of fire damage to number five. Boom! Damn. Hot and dog. at the start of their turn, they'll all, they'll all take uh, web a burning honey damage. Honey damage. Hunk, hunk, well, burning that's, web. That's right now. So oh, they're no. going to how much take how 44? much? Forty-four. Yeah, they're each going to take forty-four. Okay. Um, hunk a hunk of burning meat. Um, they are on fire already. You are defending yourselves against these trolls to the best of your uh, ability and seeming to be quite gonna effective. Six is going to take nine points of fire damage. Nine for six. Yeah, unless you want me to roll for all of them together. Uh, no, you can do them individually. Seven for uh, number four. Sure. And then five is next. And then mm-hmm. Ten for five. Ten for five. Okay. Uh, and four and five are restrained, so All I can't. Of, yeah, yeah. Four I can't and five move. What, what can I do with six? He can so probably he climb can up move. the grate. Okay, he's gonna climb up the grate and he's gonna go after Scrum. Oh, oh no! Bullshit. Oh my god! I'm right here, oh, right. You don't have to argue with <laughs> right I was just saying, you, you sound like, what's his face from uh, that old TV Natural show? Natural one. Paul Lind. Paul, yes, I'm doing, Paul Lind. Oh. I'm not being screwed, I'm being Booker. That's right, you are being I'm Booker. I'm being Booker. 16? Uh, my armor class is 17. 
Six is restrained though, right? He misses all no, of them. No, no, no. So I'm like dodging out of the way. Uh, almost ah. see through Ice Troll with its insane uh, underdark uh, skin uh, comes screaming at you with a rage you've never seen before. What does that sound like? <laughs> and then it, it's on fire. It is on fire and it is screaming towards you, uh, but it uh, it fails to hit you with you. <laughs> It, it tries to bite you. It gets. It gets. No, it gets nothing. It finds no purchase. I tuck and roll. To, much, much to its frustration. Yeah, you tuck and roll. And as you That's tuck and roll, you look thing. forward and you realize that in the distance, the illumination, the tunnel being what it is, doesn't continue. Instead, it seems to sort of arc up like this. <gasps> We're getting some mad air. There's. You're gonna get some mad air. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna do some sick tricks. <laughs> cool borders. <laughs> and you uh, continue to fly forward. That's the conclusion. The monsters turn your ear. You're up. Oh god, uh, Ska's playing. Torch these mofos. <sighs> oh, one. I'm just gonna walk right up into this, their biz. If I can, like, kind of climb yeah, down since I'm so attached. Uh, yeah, I don't wanna touch the web. I'm going to Dragon's Breath as an action, all three of them. Uh, they all need to make dex saves. Two of them at disadvantage. Um, That's right. Twelve. Disadvantage. Two. Disadvantage. Seven. They all, they all fail. fail. So they all take, I mean, not great. Dang. Ten. Fifteen. Better. Seven, seven, Eighteen points of fire damage. Eighteen points of fire damage. Wow. Hold on. That's so much fire damage. Um, is Barnabas no. the only one that's been hit? Yeah, I haven't taken any damage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh I my god. I will hold my bonus action. <gasps> Love that. 17? You said? 17? 64. <sighs> um, I don't think I have any features and traits that are bonus action. -y. It is time to finish him. <laughs> the, the, the sick air is inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Ska is playing now. We're going to do a trick. All right. Uh, anything else you want to do? Uh, no, that's it. Scrimblow. <laughs> That's not my Oh, <laughs> there is something I want to do. I want to, just in case. Well, that's fair. That's your full name. My bone. <laughs> Scrimblow. Mr. Blow. Uh, you will Please, see. Mr. Blow is my father. <laughs> There's ice. <laughs> the ice on my staff starts to kind oh, of I'm like flake me. off and turn into snow Ooh. and cover me, and I will shimmer out of sight and I will turn invisible. What? Oh, Until shit. The. Is that fearful magic? It is. Hidden but, the, but the ogres stole your blood in Arc too. Don't you remember that? <laughs> Until the start of your next turn. Okay. And I'm no. I'm literally. Just, we'll see if they re, if they notice me. I'm backing up. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. To one, avoid two, three. an attack of opportunity. That works. Okay. Mr. Blow. <laughs> All right. As I'm dodging out of the way and I'm I'm like rolling. I'm like ah oh, gods. Where where are all these, these trolls coming from? Ah. Oh, that one's nose looks like a giant dick. <laughs> and then uh, the, the the sword is still uh, alight with this with this gray uh, flame, and the the growling uh, gets a little bit louder and almost starts to turn into a barking as I uh, attempt uh, to stab uh, six in the abdomen. Uh, as you say abdomen. that, I'll look and say, oh, "That looks giant to you." <laughs> um, you see the ramp. It's like a six foot penis. <laughs> you see the ramp coming up. As you are making this stab, uh, you stab in, and you're looking at it, and you're like, "Are we going fast enough for this ramp?" Shit. Uh, that would be a 17 to hit. Okay, that hits. Number six, you say? Yes. Uh, which is going to be five points of fire damage, but a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Going the wrong page here. Eleven plus five, sixteen total points of damage. And five then, of it is fire. Thank the you. The fire should jump. Oh, that's right. They oh. haven't been close enough until now. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they've all been too far away. So then, as a part of Green Flame Blade, that's why I was on that spell. Um, the flame will jump to number four and deal an additional one d eight plus five fire to a second target. Okay. Nice. That's ten points of fire damage. Number four. Easy math. Thank you for reminding me. 
This whole time, they've been too far away. They have to be five yeah. feet apart. That's well, perfect. You guys are very effective, is what <laughs> yeah, I will say. Yeah, this has been great. Uh, I run the blade up into its its abdomen, attempting to, again, just dislodge this troll uh, from this leg. Do you say anything? Do you do anything else? Um, About the speed. <laughs> yeah, uh, God, uh, it's just, math is not Scrim's strong point. Part of us, your turn. I would, I would probably go, uh, uh, hey, uh, guys, and I would just point ahead to make them see what I saw of the of the the change in, in angle okay. uh, of the track. Okay, that's it. Barnes most blow. Uh, <laughs> do I feel like? Does it look like we're about to jump? I'm in the moment. I'm kill- I want to kill trolls. Uh, but Barnabas wants <laughs> Mr. Barnabas. You, 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 you I'm get, covered in, in troll viscera. You get that you have about 15 seconds before you hit the ramp. Real time. Mm. Oh. 15 seconds? Real yeah. time? We're fucked. There's no way we're going to get speed up to speed. That's two rounds. All right, I take it back. It's almost yeah, you're right. It's almost it's almost three rounds. S- six seconds a round. Six seconds a. So it's tw- basically we can get, go two notches and then we'll have three more seconds uh, to wrap. Up. You never should have boarded us. <laughs> and I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm getting flashbacks of scrags or 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 pirates boarding my ship and me fighting them off. This is an exhilarating experience. Is I'm going to try to just brutally murder them. Yes. Uh, I'm already advanced, so I don't, I don't even rec- need to recklessly attack. Um, but I want to make sure I use my good dice. What a joy as a barbarian to already have advantage. I know. Turn. What a joy. Yeah. It's a beautiful. I love barbarians. They're fucking great. I need to twist this because I I'm using great weapon master. I won't say it otherwise. Uh, that will hit. Okay. Nice. I'm rolling for my next attack. That will hit. Uh, what are you hitting? Which one? Uh, whichever one was trained. So I actually, I, I need to actually go. Four. I, I need to move. Yeah, yeah, move that's there. fine. You can easily yeah, do that. That's advantage. Don't you have like forty feet of movement? Uh, so I guess I will. <laughs> yeah, what I'll attack? I'll attack four first. Okay. Uh. That will be um, 17, uh, 21, uh, Damn. 21, uh, 26 points to number four. If he needs a little extra nudging. And then 17, uh, 21. Plus 10. Uh, 20 27. It's 27. It is 27. 27 points of damage. It's 27 on top of yeah. the, the amount of damage you just did? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Great weapon master is pretty Great good. Great weapon master. You're beating um, the shit out of these just roll a Just roll a d20 for me. Get a 10 or higher. Oh god. I got a 2. Okay, I, it's at one hit point. I was rolling to see if I could give you that extra hit oh. point. But it survived. It's holding on. And it's holding on. It is clearly on the edge of death. Yeah, you're just not gonna die, are you, BC? Against the web and scraping forward full of wrath, uh, but... I don't think I can bonus action to finish him off. Queenie. Skip. Ju- 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 um. Skip to the next song. We gotta get this off the playlist. What? This yep. song is not combat-y. No. Oh. This is, I just flew into work. I just landed on my flight point, and I'm gonna you go to the what? auction house. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna how, jump how off some, How about some Renger? Yeah, this is great. Um, I'm me? going to I'm rush the to the. the <laughs> uh, seeing what Scrim pointed out, Queenie's going to rush to the to the what's it and use her action to ramp us up a notch. Okay, click. You do that up to thirty. Oh, oh we were at. We were at fifteen. We were at fifteen. We so were we go to thirty. Now we go to thirty. Oh shit! Thank you for doing that. Uh, you all feel the acceleration, and you are seeing more trolls fly by. They're attempting to crawl through the spaces that they punched through in the cavern walls, but they're not reaching you in time, especially at this heightened acceleration. Do you want to do anything else with your turn? You got a bonus action left. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything I can do with my bonus action, though, unfortunately. Nobody's being dragged, nobody's being pushed. We're all good, and we're in yeah, the that's all top I got. of the round. Taishan. Taishi. Oh, this is so lovely. One, two. 
Uh, I will use all of my resources. <laughs> Three. I think a 15 foot cone from here hits all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah for absolutely. sure. Uh, no he's gonna open his mouth. <laughs> uh, and use Dragon's Breath. They need to make a dex saving throw. The, are the webs gone? The webs burned away. The webs are What's, now gone. What am I looking for? Deck Three save, deck save uh, DC 15 or 16. Uh, six, six succeeds. Okay. So just four and five take full. Better. Oh! So, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Very average. Uh, you can average. use sorcery points to re-roll. If That's he has true. empowered spells. If, so if he has, 21 yeah, yeah. points of damage, or ha or half of that if they succeed. Okay, so 21. Uh, I do not think he has half. that. That's good. Yeah, so that's I mean, this wait, person, that's and that. Plus, you be going ham on. Uh, four oh, dies shit. and immediately oh, starts shit. getting crushed underneath the pile. Uh, uh, flip him. Oh no! My most of me! I'm gonna, I'm gonna collect these over here just in case we need them again. Are we missing one? Yeah, it's behind the pug mug. Oh. A new twist on an old classic! <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like that's a home star. Right? It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that sounds is, like it's Teen Girl Squad. Yeah, 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 it's Teen Girl Squad. Oh, we have a baby. <laughs> It's the monster's turn. Yeah, I don't think he's above its action. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no. I just landed my wyvern in Orgrimmar. I'm going to jump off the bank for a couple hours. <laughs> um, one creature smashes into oh, yeah. the front. Oh, again. fuck. It's number one again. How did you get back <laughs> here? But hold on. <laughs> the tunnel is a flat circle. <laughs> oh, both, both of these guys. They come down from the ceiling it's and they're able to. Oh! Land. Oh! oh, oh no, it's raining no. trolls! It's raining oh, trolls! Oh, this is not good. This yeah, is no, so no, bad. They it's land right. down on the surface of the sled and you can see that you are like in this like Holy colony shit. almost. This there is, is so a huge bad. number of them dropping down at this point, trying, but not all of them are succeeding. Some of them are, are, are slipping on the rails and tumbling off Man. and sailing away, disappearing into uh, 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 tiny figures as you are moving as quickly as you're moving, but these succeed in, in latching on, and so Six is going to make uh, its attacks against Taishan. That's going to hit. That's not going to hit. He's not here, so he can use as much damage as he wants. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to be uh, 16 points 20s. of yeah. cold damage, and it needs to make a con he needs to make a Constitution saving throw, and that's going to be. Hold on, we got a concentration check. Concentration check. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! Okay. Oh no, I did not expect to be mauled to death by a troll. This is not a good thing. Uh, 11 points of slashing damage. Oh, oh, I didn't Titan. make a save, didn't I? I guess the cold. He fails. Oh, let's twist it. Okay. All right, we're going to twist one right. here. I happen to roll max on the cold. Basically fate. Okay, yeah. But this six is six cold, cold, you said, right? 16 cold. Ooh. I rolled maximum on the cold. So that's a big... Oh, so he's okay, got some concentration in it again. Okay, I gotta find ways that I can... We're gonna twist this one yeah, more time. Yeah, yeah, that's important. One more twist. We're doing, we're doing two. We'll we're do twist. Two. All right, it's a twist. Oh my god! And then... You gotta have enough plus. You only have to get 10. What's his con? 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bite on scrim. Gonna miss. Yep. Then this is not uh, good. I'm still fancy footworking. Five is still stuck where he is. Uh, he can make a uh, saving throw to try to unstick himself, right? Well, no, 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 there's no more web. No more web. Yeah, no more. Oh. Web. All burned away. Oh, okay. He's just got to get through his compatriots. Well, why doesn't he move up over into the other side here? Like over this way? Oh, yeah, yeah. If if he's got the movement, you're the DM, he's not me. Oh. Okay, yeah, we're yeah. going to climb up here and just crush that shit. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna hit. That's gonna miss. So gonna like miss. he's got they got to be like climbing on the side, right? Exactly like, right. Exactly right. Uh, nine points of cold damage to Taishan. Oh, to Taishan? Yep. Yeah. No, oh, no. did we? It hit him. Uh, I'm I'm attacking with another troll. Yes. Yeah, uh, can I reaction and protective wings plus yeah. three AC? Uh, yes, you can, and that is going to. I forget what I rolled the first time. I think it was a twenty total or twenty-one. 
Okay, it only makes his AC 20. Five e grapples. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be nine points of cold damage to Tai Shen. Okay. okay. And then okay. an additional seven points of slashing damage. Okay. So two con checks? Two con checks. Jesus. They both need to be ten. So I need to roll five. Shit. Well, the one's good. You want no, one, one more twist? One twist. One twist. One twist. Come on. Golden. We're good. He, he made his. Con <gasps> did he make his constitution saving throws? Yeah. Against cold? Oh, against cold. You already gave me the cold damage. No, 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 no. The con once he takes damage from one of these ice trolls, he has to make a constitution saving throws to see if he has disadvantage on his attack. Oh, we didn't do those. Oh, we just didn't. I already failed those. Okay, so he has disadvantage on his next turn. Okay. Do, do I need to keep saving, or as long as I failed once, then you're fine? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the number one is going to attack against Barnabas. Natural one. Uh, that definitely hits. That's going to be nine points of cold damage and ten points of slashing damage. Okay. Jeez. Uh, nine points, so just <coughs> five and four. Three is going to move up to your near. Eighteen to hit. That, I believe, hits. Let me double check. Yeah, it does, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it does. Okay, make a constitution saving throw for me, uh, Barnabas. And uh, that's going to be... Two points minimum damage of cold to you. Uh, um, eighteen on constant. And I make a constant. So you're fine. The cold. Uh, God, I gotta retire, retire this dice. Fifteen uh, points of slashing damage, it. however, and I need you to make a Constitution mm. saving throw. I fail. Okay, so you can, are at disadvantage on your attack rolls uh, next round okay. until the end of your next turn, and one against Queenie. I've not been using my. Nope. Nope. My wow, fence. three and one. No. What wild dice outcomes I'm having right now. Uh, that is the conclusion of the monster turn as you are starting to get swarmed by these creatures and the ramp is growing ever closer. You're near, you're up. Oh god, this is really fucking dumb. But... I think I wanna do it, let me just check something quick. I think I wanna do it, let me check on something quick. <laughs> song for the album. Um, da, 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 da. until uh, blah, 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 new form blah, blah, blah. equal less. What's the CR limit? <clears throat> Do you replace an attack with a grapple? Yes. That's how that works, I think. What level are we? Eight. 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 Okay, sorry. I, uh, I'm almost ready to go here. You have 30 more seconds or you take the uh, I am going to... Uh, okay. I will say... <laughs> Get ready to dodge! I don't know how else to say this, but... Well! And oh, I'm going shit. to... Wave my hand, and you'll see Tai Shen is bloody and battered, and he's going to, and he's going to swell and slowly shift. He's going to explode into a, uh, we'll say like a right whale, or no, we'll say a sperm whale. Uh, sperm whale is a different stat than a whale. Let me look. Sperm whale is, is a CR8 creature. Is that going to crush the boat, the weight of a whale, on this thing? <laughs> well, my hope is that it will knock the trolls off, and then I can drop concentration on it. Is my plan? But we're gonna we're we're we'll see what happens. How um, uh, how big is the whale? <laughs> Let me see. Don't do the sperm whale. That is the sperm whale will destroy this whole fucking. It's some kind of whale. Let me look. Because because meta wise, I have something to help Taishan. Well, I already said it. Uh, uh. Amazing. It is gargantuan. How many squares is that? <laughs> That's four by four. That oh, definitely breaks the mast. I'm dead. That <laughs> smashes the mast. Tai Shen turns into a four by four creature? <laughs> well, I thought the mast was like high up. It's I mean, not that it's, high it's up. Like Whale eight, really? It's like eight or nine feet from the surface of the sled. Like yeah, the they're, the sled. They're, not, they're not taller than nine feet. They're just wide. 
very long. If it was, if it's gonna break the mass, Yornir would know to not do it where it's gonna break the mass. The I, idea is I that think he wants that, to. I think that Yornir would know three things. Okay. It probably would injure the mast. It would push Scrim and Barnabas. Or I get crushed. In addition, crushed. just under either. <laughs> and the additional weight of a creature of this size, given the coming ramp, would be a huge jeopardy to sailing across a potential chasm. Let's see here. Plus, you usually got to pay extra for the whale to step on you. <laughs> <laughs> what the whale? Oh, oh man, oh, that's funny. Then what I will do is I'm going to walk up here. I'm going to walk around. Hmm, should I just help the speed? It's an act. I'm just going to walk up around. Oh, I'm going to, because he still has concentration on it. I'm going to cone this way and try to get this guy and that guy. Okay. I think that's very reasonable. Six. Oh, big 12, ones. Here we go. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 points of fire damage on a fail or half on a success. To which uh, numbers? Two, three, three and five. five. Right. Thank you. How much was it? 26. 26. Okay. Uh, five crumbles underneath the uh, sled. Uh, oh. Five crumbles? He crumbles. Oh, wow. And immediately sails away into the night. Um, okay. And then I... Yeah, I'll stay right there. Christmas. True. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to attack number six with uh, a green flame blade. And, um, you know, just try, I'm just trying to kill six the best of to my ability. Yikes. One twist. Do Which it. one twist? One twist. Oh. It was not meant to be. I finally missed my attack. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to do? No. Cry. Okay, you cry a little. Okay. Do you, want to, you don't want to move? I, I, ogres to the left of me, trolls to the right. <laughs> Here I am, stuck in the that's middle with the ornier. That's very that's funny. Really, that's that's very, very funny. funny. That's very um, funny. Barbos, you're up. Uh, I'm going to look around, and I'm going to use my bonus action as the tail is going to... Um, it'll uh, scooch back in uh, to my back as my hand will then turn into a claw. As I'm going to look at number one, and... Uh, <clears throat> I'll say, okay, no more borders! Uh, borders in the bow, and I'm going to recklessly attack. I'm going to use a twist. Yep. Wow. I'm not doing well. That is going to be. That's going to definitely hit. Um, I'm going to deal some damage to it. So 17 plus. Uh, plus seven is uh, 24 points of bludgeoning damage. And I have the crusher feet. I'm going to move him five feet off into an attempt to knock him off the boat. Oh, get fucked. And that's number one you're hitting? Number one. Okay. Yeah, fuck that guy. Run under the, run, right under the rails. I want to try to smush to bits. He's going to make a quick check to see if Play he succeeds. Play-Doh his ass. <laughs> he does not succeed. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna give that to you. He streaks away. Uh, you, uh, hear, you hear the most disgusting <laughs> squanching sound that's ever squanched. Your turn, beastie! As I'm going to now not use my anchor and grab my crab claw, and I'm gonna attempt to make a grapple with my crab claw. How do you like them grapples? And uh, that is, it replaces the attack action, and I'm going to uh, uh, attempt to grapple. So it's a. Uh, Contest, I believe. I get to choose, and I get a 20, dirty. Uh, I get a 23. Well, he fails. So he's grappled. Okay. I am then going to attempt to drag him off of the boat. Okay. The sled. So I'm going to attempt to, if I can basically move this way and hang on, Yeah. I'd like to move him here and then drop him. Get fucked. Yeah, yeah. Mechanically, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I see no flaw in your logic. You, you drop down to the actual sled <laughs> sled, yeah. and underneath your feet, there's this shuddering mm -hmm. effect because there is a 
thin piece of wood between you and ice that is moving at 30 miles per hour. You manage to land and you can feel that shuddering underneath your feet and you release and you watch. Uh, uh, the sound is incomprehensible. The sound of cracking bones and folding Ugh. flesh as the <laughs> sled, as heavy as it is, barely moves a, a bit, but he gets absolutely played out at the uh, ass of this sled. <laughs> and I will say, uh, that's, that's him. That's so him. that's 10 feet I've moved. <laughs> ten. I can't help myself. Uh, 15, 20. <laughs> Because you had to drop down and get back up. I'm yeah, going to say that you're at 25 now. So you still have five more feet of movement or however much. I have 40. Oh, yeah. So, so you 25 have, being you, here? You still have 10 feet. Yeah. It's okay. Open. So you still have 25, feet, uh, uh, 15 feet of movement. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to use my other crab claw attack to try to grapple number three now. That's outrageous. <laughs> I believe in you. Dude, you're just yeeting these guys <laughs> off this way. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I, this is not gonna go. Uh, it's only a fourteen, so he he might be able to natural twenty. Okay, so he's able to. Uh, that's it. That's my turn. We're turning him into paste, lads. <laughs> Queensy. Um, Ace I don't think Queensy. I can get to tell you Shen anymore. Hey. So yeah, you can. You have a rabbit hop. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You're light on your feet. I'm also, a, I'm sorry to put you this in this position, but uh, you still do not feel that you're going fast enough to hit this ramp. I'll, I'll knock. That's a it. horrible thing to do to steal your turn. So I'm going to say that you can use the <laughs> no, free okay. object interaction and then have the rest of your turn. No, that's okay. Oh. I'll use my action to do it. Queen's like, I we gotta go use my faster. action last time. I'll do it again. It's done. Uh, if you have any movement or bo uh, bonus actions you can use, please do. Um, and if you don't, then I'm going to give you the biggest bonus action boon next to. <laughs> I just, I'm imagining Queenie, I'm just in the, my imagination palace. <laughs> Queenie does a little rabbit bicycle kick, is that a butterfly kick? Where she jumps up and then she goes <laughs> and then oh. knocks them off. <laughs> That's very next cute. Turn. Next turn. Yeah. Um, sled's turn. Uh, nobody is being dragged, nobody is off the sled, uh, everyone else got completely smooshed Arr! underneath. So, Taishin, you're up, top of the room. Oh, fuck. Uh, I will take my turn very quickly this time. <laughs> I'm going to walk. Because... I'm going to try to step away. Opportunity attack. Oh, my apologies. Opportunity attack. This is literally the moment that the sled should leave the... the Oh, we, we've we've done two rounds. Uh -huh. That was correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is literally the moment that the sled there's two seconds now, or three seconds. Yeah, yeah. There, there are three seconds. So it is hitting <laughs> the ramp, and you are Thank getting you. really. What was the? Uh, how did you phrase it? You're getting sweet air. Uh, sweet air. Yeah. Sick yeah, 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 yeah. air. Sick air. Yeah, yeah. You're getting sick air. Scott now. starts playing. This entire round, the entire surface of the sled is difficult to rain because you are actually mid air as you are transitioning what? and hoping that you can get to the cliff. What I will say is that it still looks close. Given the lateness of this uh, yeah. 50 miles per hour uh -oh. being what it is, you kind of either need to crash into jump the wall or on. boost or push. I turn or us all into whales. Turn us all into whales. <laughs> I use mass whale polymorph. Mass whale polymorph. That's a thing. Would be the nice most disgusting spell. sound one could possibly <laughs> imagine. When we all just like, there's just 16 whales <laughs> crashing. But you're all, all suddenly very aware of the gravitylessness of the situation. Situation, and now it is Taishan's oh, turn. Oh, he's going to use his last two sorcery points and make a third level uh, Scorching Ray at... Uh, That's funny as fuck, dude. At these guys. And uh, he's gonna use his bonus action to, or th that's his bonus action. His action is going to be the, to Dragon's Breath this guy. So let's do the Dragon's Breath first on number two. Uh, he needs to make a deck save. Wait, is it? Is there a big cavern below? Looking down, there's a chasm that is dark. You see nothing. It could be uh, hundreds of feet, perhaps thousands. Oh, so this is new, newly. Yeah, we uh, haven't like actually seen. Like, no, the down, ground I guess. seems to be sundered here. It should there should be cavern, but you can see that there uh, a split was almost intentionally made, like it was blown apart. Oh shit. 19 points of fi uh, fire damage if he passes or if he fails. Half as much as he succeeds. Uh, what's the DC? 
Uh, 15. 15. 15. Fails. Okay. He takes the 19 points of fire damage. Which number was that? Uh, two. Thank number you. two. Number dose. I'm gonna twist this one. Natural 20, gotta go. Nay! Hey. Yay! Oh, wow. Oh, uh, hey. uh, so... Oh, wow. That's two hits. Gotta kill these trolls! That's... Uh, well, their AC is 16. Yep. 8 plus 7 is not 16, correct? That's fine. I'll That's it. And that hits. So one misses, four hit. Is that four hits? Yeah. Well. Uh, okay, that's one, two. What is it? Scorching Ray. Um, one, two, four. Nine points of fire damage, number three. Yep. That will do the crit. Uh, 17 points of fire damage, number three. Nice. Uh, three's out. Eight. 13 oh, points of three, fire damage. Not Sorry, three? To number three. Two and... Okay, sorry. I, I added to the wrong person. I, okay. I thought you were talking about two. Two no. is fine, and 13 is still here. Or three is still here. Okay. And there's 13 more points of fire damage, number three. 13 more. Got yeah. it. And then... And six? 13 more points of fire damage to number three. Oh, wow. Okay. So I fought Dragon Rest of this guy, Scorching Raid that guy. Pass my turn. Okay. Scrim. Uh, oh, that was Oh, no, no, no. no I said that was Titan. 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 Wow, Titan. I, I keep thinking it's of you as your name. Five minute Monster. turn. They're hurting. Um, it's a lot of trolls. Yornir, Barnabas, and Scrim. Who of you are look, is looking the weakest? It's gotta be. Definitely not me. I I, I, have, I don't have a scratch Tai Shen is super weak. Wow. If that would it, it affect their decision to well, go Well, certainly two is gonna care about that. 56 for you? I'm approaching bloody. I'm fi- I'm in 56 as well. But that's proportionally more for right. my head points. Uh, oh yeah. I'm fresh probably Yornir then. Probably Yornir. Hit. Hit. And uh, it's going to attempt to push you five feet backwards. <gasps> oh shit. But we're all like in midair. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> we're like weightless. Uh, we're tied to it though. Or I'm tied to it. I don't know about I think everybody but Scrim is tied to it. I'm right? not tied to it either. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm I'm sorry this not. combat's going so late, but I'm not. That's all good. Uh alright. So you're gonna cool. you're gonna take quite a bit of damage and it's going to have a twenty-one to try to uh, push you back. Oh push me? Yeah. 21, oh. Look at this jackass. Look at this fuck face. Natural 20, uh, 28. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Gotta yeah! Yeah! Gotta give it up. You take 14 points of cold damage. Me? Yeah. Wait, what, can I, can I, uh, no, I don't know. No, it my hits you up. twice and no, then it pushes I just, you. So I, we just resolved yeah. the push, but before that you take. I thought you were attacking your here. Okay, that's fine. Apologies. <laughs> How is damage total? That's uh, all that will be halved. 14 colds total. Seven. And then that's... Apply changes. 13 plus... Ni- uh, so 19 points total of slashing damage. Uh, okay. And you need to make a constitution saving throw twice. Okay. The DC is 15. You get disadvantage on your attack rolls because you get all slowed. Con, uh, one will definitely pass. It'll be a 23 and then 16. Both pass. So you're fine. Uh, and then uh, the same is true for Tai Shen. The first one's gonna miss. Oh, oh. next uh, one's 15, gonna miss. 15, 15, sorry. Does that change it? Yeah, no, no, okay. you're good. Cool. Uh, sure. The DC sorry. is literally 15. <gasps> uh, it runs up to Tai Shen. It misses both of its claw attacks, but then it tries to push him off the edge. He needs to make an athletics or an acrobatics <gasps> check. Oh, boy. Oh. Imagine if Tai Shen I, died I, I'm and so here. Weird. I'm gonna, it, it's 10. It's, the DC's 10, yo. Uh, well, let's see what his fucking skills are. Probably not any good. Probably not any good at all. So I'd say double twist it if you need to. Should we twist it? Yes. That's a five. Double twist it, double twist it. Double twist it. Yeah. Double twist it. Yeah. yeah, let it rip here. Oh my god. Uh oh. <laughs> it Uh-oh. was inevitable. inevitable. Uh, yeah, he's fucked. That's eight. He oh, gets pushed, pushed five feet off. He's not 
hurtled backwards because he's everyone attacked. is flying. He's, he's tied to it. He's tied to it, but you are moving through the air right now. He's gonna die. So he's he's no longer on the platform, and, and it's still unclear whether or not you will even make this jump in the first when, place. When we land on the other side, he's just gonna be like a bag of loose meat. Is like, he gonna like pull around this way? No, like, uh, not yet. Yeah. But okay. he, he's just gonna be like loose meat in the bag. Yeah, no, it's gonna this be is bad. bad. This is gonna be bad. <laughs> You're in here. This is gonna be very yeah. bad. You're up. You're oh, up. why are both of my characters so bad? Um, I don't. You tell me why it's so bad. Uh, I am going to. I have a solution. I am going to invent those blueprints oh, <laughs> tomorrow. 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 I will <laughs> tomorrow. I will penis. Tomorrow, I will slap on the cooler. Oh, my you're God. You're insane. You're insane. Uh, one, two, usual, eight. I see. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. I Because I, I don't have any spell slots anymore. I, I, I actually can't use... You couldn't even use that spell. So I'm glad we... we <laughs> is, it that up. Is, is it a crime? Is it a crime? Is it a crime? This man is real? <laughs> a succulent Chinese male? <laughs> Your democracy at work. Beats. This man touch my penis. <laughs> if you don't know I what see Mikey's you know doing right now, go go find that video. I don't know how you judo. find that. He's having Mike's having a meltdown. We're all having it's, uh, it's one in the morning. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I don't have anything to, to to boost us, and we're max speed. Uh, not that it matters. So I'm going to just dragon's breath. Uh, I'm gonna do it this way so that I don't get my buddies. I'll Dragon's Breath number three as an action. Dex save. Uh, DC 16. Uh, right? 16? Not even close. I, I can't believe how low uh, dexterity saving throws are for. 14 points Trolls. of fire damage for number three. 14? Oh no! To number what? Uh, three. And I'm going to bonus action healing word. Uh, at a uh, second level, or let's say third level. And These oh, fucking jackasses, they're like... I'm done, go! Oh look, they have uh, a lot of fire magic! All let's I'm gonna do is, is attempt to slash at number three with my weapon. Okay. Uh, green flame blade again. Okay. <sighs> twist. Yeah, one, give me one twist, this is a 14 to hit. I got you. I'm just, all of a sudden my rolls are taking a turn for the worst, that's oh, a yeah. 17 to hit. That'll hit. That'll hit. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, plus 4 is 16 points of damage, 4 of it is fire on number 3. 16 he's, total. He's out. What? He's out. He's dead. You killed him. Oh. What does that sound like? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> these are, these trolls are mess. Uh, that's my, I, I would try to move closer to the mast <laughs> and grab onto it. Oh, you try to grab onto the mast? I'm not attached to the boat. Okay. So I would like s try to swim through the air as That's well, like, hilarious. and try to grab onto the mast to the best of my ability. That's my turn. You do that. Uh, Barnabas blow. <laughs> so, uh, it's Barnablos. Barnablos. <laughs> I am going to uh, grab uh, uh, the harpoon that I have. Hold on, who's next after me? Queenie. Oh, Queenie. Uh, I'm just going to just busy take my time, my action, if I can. To basically tie both me and Scrim to the mask. Okay. It's easy because I'm holding onto the mask now. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to take your harpoon and just plunge it into Taishan's chest and pull him back <laughs> onto the boat. You've been a real Get dick tonight, Taishan. Uh, no, you do that. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Great. Hold on! Brace for impact! Uh, Queenie, the ship is sailing through, the sled is sailing through the air and looking down, it looks like it might just hit the edge of the cliff and crash, perhaps spilling, spilling everyone, doing tremendous amount of damage to yourself and the troll, not that you care, but to your friend. <laughs> uh, do you have any way of... Uh, Does the troll look like it weighs more or less than your near? Uh, more. How, like, roughly how much? Less than 500 pounds? Probably 249. <laughs> I realized I can, I can carry up to 500 pounds. Oh, oh, shit! I don't think it exceeds 500 pounds. Okay. I would say that it's definitely heavier than yours. So then, um... Oh, 
Oh, this is really difficult because if we just leave Taishan down there, there's no way he survives this. I mean, he's to attached. Be to be fair. Yeah. He's attached, but he's dangling. If it barely makes yeah. it, it's going to decapitate him. <laughs> you want to make an omelet, you got to crack a few eggs. That's all I'm going to say. Um, what the fuck? Does do Taishan and the troll look like they weigh more than 500 pounds combined? Because mm. I can split the bees. What do you think? Uh, buck 40 for Taishan? Buck 50? How tall is he? Uh, six feet? Uh, he's, probably, he's probably closer or to five, 175. Five, five, I don't think he's six feet tall. Let's call him 170. If he's six foot, we'll call him 170. Yeah. He's, he's probably a little shorter than, than six feet. Yeah. I always thought of him as thinner than that. But he's he might be tail. 160. He has a tail. We'll All right. call him 60. He's let's got say, a tail. We'll call him 170. 170. Know, it's always funny. Can we Google. roll for their weight? When you see, oh, when you see like uh, people who are obviously very light, like designing, like very skinny designing, like races, like this giant, <laughs> yeah. super heavy minotaur. They weigh one hundred and ninety pounds. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's like damn. If, if, oh, we're, if we're putting shit. if we're putting Taishan at one seventy, I think that him and the troll would be just past one uh, five hundred pounds. Okay, um, I will use my bees to pick up Taishen and hold him aloft in the air, bring him back to the boat. Um, that would be my action to okay. do that. Um, so you mage hand him onto the surface. Yeah. That is important. Uh, but he's, well, he's not going to be on the surface. Oh. There, he's basically going to be just above it to keep his weight off of the boat. Oh. I'm also going to use my bonus action for my bees to lift me 10 feet off of the boat. And I'm hoping that having the little bit of weight off the boat will be okay. enough to get it over the, the edge. Thank you. Oh no. <laughs> the sled collides with the side of the This is so cliff. bad. And it does not make it very far. Uh, instead of remaining whole, it hits just oh, the shit. back of the, the two rails and crunches down. It does not hit the edge of the cliff and it does not explode into splinters, but it does one of these violent collapse uh, uh, moments and there's this sickening crash sound. You all hit the ground taking Oh, my except for me and Except Taishan. for Queen and Taishan. Except for yeah, you and Taishan. my C3, C4 just exploded uh, in my spine. <laughs> I just need to grab I, I, I can't afford to lose another two inches. This isn't good. <laughs> That's very funny. Oh no, I'll only be 6'2". <laughs> Don't ever let me row again. <laughs> this is bad. Oh. You all take 21 bludgeoning as you crunch wow. into, into the ground. And oh, it's Skids and skates back and forth. Um, in addition to the, uh, what number is that? Two. 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 I think this just kills him. It does. <laughs> just I, kills I, him. I, I, I think it, it his actually spine, does. Can his spine literally <laughs> shoot out of his? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Get out of Absolutely. Like when you, it, like when you is take a. Is there a still over there? <laughs> like, I don't have it. Like when you it. take a straw wrapper and you just blow it off the straw. Yeah! Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like a. It sails up into nowhere. Um, oh, and no. doesn't regenerate. Uh, he know, absolutely dies, and you try like green, so. starting to spin now, uh, all together, um, before you uh, crunch it's into the side of the cavern wall before you finally skid to a halt. Bleary-eyed, looking around, you have crossed this chasm threshold and you've come to a stop. You can still hear the sound of the um, uh, dragon statue blowing forward, but you're too great an angle. The, the sail is just flapping and making its sound and looking across the chasm uh, where there's still a little bit of shimmering light, you can see t dozens of these trolls. <laughs> All Holy standing fuck. there, but unable to cross the chasm without the same means of sick air. All, all of the ones in the front row are covered in their friend Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. There's just bits and pieces of That's Carl and Jim. And you have man managed to like cross Jim. this threshold, but there is still more tunnel in front of you. You need to repair the sh sled that you are on. You are all hurting. Uh, tai Shen is barely hanging on by a thread. It's true. And that is where we'll call it tonight. So. Oh, well, well done, done, Derek. Derek. What an awesome mechanical. You know,